Hey, good evening everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And as, as most of you know, I do this video uh, uh, live uh, stream on Sunday and Thursday. And the reason why we do that is really to bracket the week for our trading. Now, like everything we do in this channel is essentially to do three or four things. It's to promote uh, culture, language, uh, custom, dance, and you know, just advancing a culture, right? the Khmer culture essentially, which is me, my people. Uh, but the other thing is to help uh, investment, uh, to trying to get them get rich and okay. make money. But one thing about investment, you see that there's a lot of people in this YouTube channel, that, but they're not necessarily Cambodian. It's actually, we have a lot of South Americans. We have a lot of Mexicans, a lot of uh, uh, Central Americans. Uh, because uh, making money and getting rich is a universal problem. It's a human problem. And nothing to do with who you are, or what, where you're from, and, and where your parent is. It doesn't matter how tall, how ugly, or how beautiful you are. It doesn't matter. Making money is a human problem. Nobody wants to be poor, and nobody wants to work in construction their whole life. And, uh, or, or anywhere. Uh, you know, they just wanna, they wanna move up the ladder in, in the society ladder. So, we kind of figured out a way. There is a method to a madness, and most of you are watching me, watching the journey as I'm going through. And um, granted, at this stage of my life, I make a little bit more money, uh, you know, than, than when I was in my 20s. Uh, so therefore, it's much easier for me to make an investment. But you know, it's all perspective. So if you can put a few hundred dollars into your investment, it will help. All right, so before we start the show uh, here, that's just my opening monologue, just kind of help you. I'm gonna go ahead and transition the music. Every time I turn to the music, I am so bad at it. If the music's supposed to seem smooth, it's smooth transition, but I, I had never got that correctly, not once. And uh, mainly the reason is because they both share the same video. And so as soon as I click on the other one, the other one's dead. And... <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Oh my god. So bad at this stuff. But that's okay. It's fun. You know, this is why you're doing YouTube. I'm not working for CNN or anything like that. Hey, Delight. Uh, so I'm picking up echo sound from you. If it's okay, can you mute your... Can you mute your mic until it's your turn to talk? Delighting the world. Yeah, the light in the world. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, so the title of my show t today is called Love and Money. I, I, I can't remember who it is in Discord recommended for today's show. It's called Love and Money. Uh, one of the reasons is we're going to have a guest speaker here at later tonight. Somewhere around, she's still out shopping right now. So somewhere around 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Uh, maybe 8.30 to 9 o'clock, she's gonna come on. Uh, and when she come on, uh, we'll, we'll talk about relationship. And for those who been following me from the very beginning, let, we, we're gonna ask this, what do you think is the most important investment vehicle? Like if you're talking about D, if I was gonna talk investment, if I was doing a lecture at a, a school or a university or somewhere, and I'm gonna say, here's a pathway to make millions of dollars. Here is the journey to get millions of dollars. And this is how you get rich. And watch me drive the Lamborghini, watch me do all these things, and you know, doing like all the things that Andrew Tate is doing, all right? Just living the life, living the, the gentleman life. But what do you think I wanna talk first? This is, this is what's unique about me as, as a Cambodian guy, a Cambodian American guy, compared to a lot of other, you know, uh, YouTube video that, that talk about single guy. The, a lot of Manosphere uh, YouTube channel out there, there's a lot of guys out there, they're just talking about just living the life. But you're gonna wait until you hear the, my message. The number one thing that I talk about is actually almost the opposite of every one of them, almost. Anybody wanna take a guess what it is? Number, let, let's ask this court real quick. Let's see if anybody here, anybody in this court wanna guess, what do you think is the most important uh, thing the first the first step of investment first step before you get rich Come here, it's Matt invest in yourself invest in yourself. Okay. I like that 
Anybody else? So Maddie said it, it vests in himself. Okay, I agreed. I agreed. You you can't really help anybody if you can't help yourself. Um, I just I just didn't put that as number one. That would be number one if I have to rank everything. But the reason why I never put that as number one or, or number zero is that is that I just I just assume that's given. Now if you are in this YouTube channel, if you if you do nothing but eat, sleep, think about making money, then you probably already invest in yourself. Because if you want to make money, it it also correlate to other things you do too. Because you're not gonna you're not gonna do criminal behavior. You're not gonna go and drunk driving because it's all against the the concept of making money. Because if you're in jail, you're not gonna make any money. If you're if you're getting a DUI, you're not gonna make any money. If you're not working out on all the things that you know contribute, reading a book, uh, advancing, knowledge, studying, going to school and work on your physical fitness, doing all those things. All those things contribute to your success and making money and how to become rich. So I, I just kind of take it for granted and, and, and just don't even list it because I assume that if you, already, if you already want to be a dragon fighter, you probably already been working on yourself. And I'm just reinforcing uh, what you already believe, all right? But the most important thing, the number one thing in the investment strategy, you want to talk about rich and making money, I think, is actually invest on relationship. Relationship is probably the most important thing. People don't realize how important relationship is to investment. The, the problem set is this. If you date the wrong girl, if I'm a guy, if you're a girl, you date the wrong guy, it doesn't matter, you know, so all, all guys date the wrong guy or girls date the wrong girl, doesn't matter what, what your preference you like. If you choose whoever you want to spend the rest of your life with, and that person is not a good person, what is the point of talking about saving? What's the point of talking about investment? What's to talk about anything to do with, uh, <laughs> because that other half is going to destroy it. They're going to destroy it overnight. If you, if you date the wrong guy, and that guy is just, abusing you, he's getting drunk, he's lazy, he doesn't go to work, he's just spending your money. What's the point of talking about investment for? What's the point of talking about saving? You have you have somebody who's just totally going against that. Now, dating the right guy doesn't guarantee happiness. Or dating the, you know, doesn't guarantee you're going to get rich either, you know. But however, you get a fighting chance. You have a better chance than dating the wrong guy. So it's, it's so important to pick the right partner. It, it, people don't realize how important it is to pick the right partner. And we have that choice. We control that. Everything else, it takes time to become rich. It, it takes time. It takes investment. It takes strategy. It takes calculation. It takes math. It takes science. It takes arts. It takes all kinds of elements to get rich. But you can literally control that destiny in a matter of seconds just by dating the wrong person because if you become if you if you date the wrong person and that person drag you into illegal behavior yeah you're not gonna get rich you're gonna be poor for the rest of your life you're gonna be poor it's a guaranteed poor a journey to be poor for the rest of your life it's 100% it's 100% guaranteed like if I'm willing to make a bet on anybody I, I, I like that's that's a 100% sure if you date a very bad person, you probably pretty much gonna be poor for the rest of your life. The odd of you getting out of that hole, it's very, very tough. Very, very tough. Because if you're gonna go out there and compete with the real world, and the real world does not give a damn about what happened to your past. They do not care, they have no mercy. So you gotta go and compete against guys like me. All I do is eat, sleep, think about making money. All I do is eat, sleep, thinking about how to be successful and how to beat you. So if you go and get a car, you got to go and compete against me to buy a, buy a car. You go get an apartment, you have to compete against me to buy a, get an apartment. If you go uh, get a job, you have to compete against a guy like me to get a job. And I just want to win every single time. Well, I, and I'm not unique. There's 50,000 of them in University of Ohio. There's 60,000 of them somewhere or 30,000 of them in USC. There's another 30,000 in Arizona. Every, every one of these major institutions, there's like 
10,000 to 30,000 to 50,000 college students are hungry, hungry to be the next leader. So if you're not, if you're not doing things to set yourself up for success, you're going to be behind. You got to work a lot more hours. I, I put a lot of hours to, to, to get to this church. If you want to beat me, you got to go and put more hours than I did. So, so the whole point is, is that a relationship is so important. I can't stress enough on this. I talk about this all the time. Investment, you got to work on the investment journey. I didn't realize that my, uh, my video here, this may be a copyright. <laughs> uh, let me switch the, let me switch this. I, so the first 10 minutes are gonna be, gonna be wiped out from YouTube. I, one thing I didn't understand about this YouTube and thing, it's just ridiculous. YouTube is just ridiculous. And I, I don't really care about the copyright, but I, I do my best I can. Like this video here, it's all copyright. I mean, I'm, I've been flagged by YouTube like a hundred times now. And, but I didn't care. I said, you know what, go, go for it. Just strike me, I don't care. I, because I just, I, I wanna make this video and put up. So that's my, my point is uh, about relationship. Relationship is the, one of the most important investment tools you can make, okay? Especially for immigrants, because a partner, like if, if, if you wanna be rich and you just came to America and you don't know the language, you don't know the culture, and you are husband and wife, guess what? That husband and wife team can open a restaurant and now you're gonna be successful. You can open a nail salon, now you're gonna be successful. You can open a, a laundromat. You can open a convenience store. It is very, very difficult to open a business by themselves. Almost every successful Cambodian men and women, they owe, and every successful business that I've seen, there's always the husband and wife working together. And now it's a family, not only husband and wife, but they got their children involved and they got their cousin involved. They got everybody involved in running a, a lot of these restaurants, a lot of these businesses. and. You know, that's that's the journey. Investing on a relationship is unbelievable. So uh, with that, I'm, that's my uh, that's some of my little narrative for this morning, uh, this theme, not this morning, this evening. And uh, so how many of you agreed with what I just say in that? I'm just curious. But I'm going to go to uh, Discord here. What do, what do you all think? I'll start with uh, Matt since Matt have his mic off. Uh, earlier, Matt, what, what do you think? What, what I said earlier? Yeah, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head, mate. It's, everything revolves around relationships. If you're not happy, everything is affected by that. So get yourself right, get your relationship right, and the rest will flow from it. Yeah, Matt is a word of wisdom. Now I mentioned a lot well, of small can... business because uh, Austin, uh, Austin, you are, you are a a business kind of guy, and you are very successful. What do you agree to, with the uh, with the relationship? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, before we even uh, you bought this nail salon, my wife was working hard at the nail salon, and then she opened up her own smaller business yeah. in aesthetics. And then uh, while I was working. Um, and then, yeah, I put in 72 hours a week to make up for this money to buy the salon that she was working in. So, yeah, you know, you got to work together because you can't be spending the money that you're making. And, uh, you know, it it takes a lot to uh, to be a team. You know, we've been married for four only. We haven't been married for that long, like four years, but we've been together for since we were, uh, I was 19 and she was 18. So. Yeah, our parents are immigrants. Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, come here, you're for our. You were you immigrated, right? Yeah, I, I came with my parents. My I, I was a young boy, but I came with my parents here. Yeah, so my in-laws uh, they immigrated here during the Vietnam War, mm -hmm. and uh, they opened up a restaurant a really long time ago. And like you said, this is back in like the 70s, yeah. 70s and 80s. You know, you think about someone that doesn't even barely know the language, and then. They go and her father worked at a at a machine shop, and her mom yeah. was at home. And they made enough money, to, and they you know they got lucky and found a spot that was low in rent, and were they were willing to work with them. And yeah, they grew their business, and then they sold it, and then they moved. And uh, 
yeah, and just started living a normal life. And now me and my wife are at it where I work as an electrician. And then she works at the nail salon now. And we still work hard, you know, nothing's easy. Um, I still put in six days a week and she pretty much working seven days a week. And my time off, I'm fixing stuff at the shop and yeah. she's working. So, and we still have two kids, you know, seven and seven years old and, uh, and a six month old. So, you know, you have to be right with both sides to, you know, to be successful. It's not, uh, success doesn't come overnight. This is over, uh, you know, years. So, um, you know, yeah. get right with, uh, your loved ones and, yeah. uh, good things will come. Good things will definitely come out of that. A lot of, a lot of people put a lot of, uh, you know, they, they work very hard on an, on an investment, on studying, on everything else, but they just they, they just don't live a very healthy lifestyle. And then and then all of a sudden you kind of like, why am I struggling, um, you know, to do the simplest thing, you know, and and it it's important. People, I I can't stress enough. This relationship is is so it's so so, so I, I don't know how affect this is in other community, but the Hispanic community, the Latin community that, that migrate to the United States, uh, when you go to their restaurants and the stores and, you know, you see husband and wife working together, uh, it's, uh, you see, it's just, it's, it's so important to, to get out of the journey. And the things that I push for is that our parents struggle to get here to the United States and the immigration journey need to end at our watch. It, it can't continue on. It can't go two, three generations. You know, the old country is dead. Whatever memory, whatever life, I mean, obviously those countries are still active and they do on. But the world, my world to Cambodia is no longer that world. The Cambodian people who live in Cambodia, they move on and they, they become something else. But my family, my journey, we live in America now, we're Americans. And this is it. We got to make the best out of it. And uh, and this this country gave us so many great opportunities. All we have to do is just be patient and work hard and just and just follow the rules. It's not that difficult. Just follow the rules. And uh, and in the land of capitalist man, there is way to make money. There's a lot of ways to make money. And we're gonna show you one of one of these ways. All right. So. With that, uh, there, there's a lot of people. Well, first of all, hey, Brandon's on vacation. He's not mad at me. A lot, somebody, I saw somebody in chat and say Brandon's mad at me. Brandon is not mad at me. He's in, he's on vacation, and uh, <laughs> he's mad because I didn't go all in to Tesla. I I, I go in all Tesla. I go in Tesla pretty hard. Uh, man, Maverick so hot. It made up almost 80% of my uh, portfolio. I'm slowly decreasing it down. <laughs> Hate the sad music. Yeah, I'm sorry, John. Uh, but you know what? When you get to the Philippines, you get to play all the funky music you want. And uh, I've been in the Philippines many times, just John. You're gonna love it. Um, I recommend I recommend spend some time in Manila first. It's a big city, which is very similar to other. But then if you work your way to the countryside, uh, man, be shocked. Be shocked. <laughs> okay. So the very first topic, if you have any topics you want to talk about, it's great. There's, there's a lot of topics that you want to ask. Uh, but the first one, this is coming from uh, one of the new member, newest member here to our community. Now, first of all, how do you join our community? Where does the Khmer community hang out? Where do you, we, we put our hats? Well, we put our hats in discords. Uh, so that's where you exchange files, uh, pictures, videos. Uh, not to Facebook, not Discord. Discord is a safest, it's, it's a safe tool for all of us, for a stranger uh, that we can get together and it has voice. And there's a lot of, like today, for example, today there was like four clinics happen all at, uh, we, we, we talk about, uh, we talk about Tesla, we talk about Tesla, we talk about option trading. And at one point we talk about Ethian has a strategy and then whole bunch of command nations try to figure out how to uh, how to help him and I was like dude I'm so lost I, I couldn't even figure out how, what, what Ethan's strategy is you know I couldn't even explain it but um, but yeah they were trying to they were, we were all trying to figure out how how can we make how can we make that strategy work 
you know, one thing that's one thing I love about this community. We have so many experts. We have some who's just brand new, who, who probably never trade before that. We got a guy who put twenty dollars, and we got a guy who has one point seven million dollars uh, of Tesla stocks and Tesla stocks, and we have some super rich guy and we have some super poor guy, and we have guys who just started yesterday. And uh, we, we literally had one just started today. He said he put some money into into uh, buying stocks and buying trades. Yeah, so we got all kinds of skill set. And one thing I learned is that the the more experienced uh, guys, they really want to help. They really, really want to help. So you take advantage of it uh, because in the process of helping people, now I understand why they want to help. When in the process of helping people, I'm asked like when, when they every time they help me, I'm asking them questions from a different angle and different perspective. You think they they heard every single question up to this point? They haven't. They haven't. It's like it's new. Also, especially in Tesla, when you're talking about Tesla, it's pretty new territory for a lot of people. And uh, so so when you ask all these questions, yeah, it make them think a little bit. And as a result, it, if you can. If you can advance your portfolio just you know just an inch or two, they will do it. They will spend an hour teaching you something just so they can get that get that one ingredient right. Because that one ingredient you're talking about. I was talking to Kenny the other day. He's talking about ten cents. Okay, right? ten cents to to me is is ten cents. But ten cents to him when you're buying you know over almost a million dollar stuff, that's like. That's like ten thousand dollars. That's like a hundred thousand dollars, you know, to some people. If you talk to Sam, man, he'll take ten cents in a heartbeat. He's like, yeah, if they give me ten cents, I got, I got almost two million dollars. Now they'll take that. So they're talking about very micro numbers, and and they and, and they can make a lot of money. So it's it's that's why they want to help out. All right. So this is from the newest member. He he wants to know, can you get rich doing Acorn? For those who don't know what Acorn is, let me just Google real quick for you so you can see it. Uh, I actually had an Acorn account, uh, not Acorn the TV show. Let's see this Acorn. Here, go Acorn Investment. All right, so this one right here, Acorn. So I actually created an Acorn account. I created it like a couple years ago. Totally forgot about it. I created and it slowly take the money. I don't even remember. To tell you the truth, I create this thing when it first came out. I think it came out in. 98 or 99 there's a year show here somewhere when it was found it was brand new like i create i was like one of the first you know 10,000 user all right so i i, I log in create it and uh and it pulled five dollars uh pretty much five every time there's a transition uh let's say it, it's essentially like collect change all right it collect change and uh, and then it put into this bank and then invest for you and then that's pretty much it. I don't even know about it. So when I would draw the money, I had almost uh, a cup, almost three thousand dollar. So from the time Acorn existed to six months ago when I would draw it, and it's I had about three thousand dollar in there. All right. So what they tell me is not very effective. Not very effective. All right. <laughs> Okay, so here's my thing about about Acorn, picky banks, and stuff like that. And if you start off in collecting comic books, baseball card, um, then you kind of understand what I'm talking about here. If you want to get rich, if you want to be a millionaire, you're not going to get rich through Acorn. I'm telling you, you're not going to get rich. You just not. You're not going to get rich rich doing picky banks, putting money in picky banks. It's you have a much better chance to take whatever the money you put in Acorn. Let's say twenty dollar, a hundred dollars a month, and take that money and invest it in a high interest, um, you know, uh, stocks or an ETF. You just have a much better chance. It, it's not even worth it. I, I, I you know, if some could, and if anybody has a different viewpoint from what I view, I'm pretty sure everybody in this channel here all agree with me. But I'm pretty sure there's somebody out there who may be disagreed. So I'm open up to the uh, group here. Does anybody agree to that? Or disagree all right I guess they all agreed to to uh, yeah so here, here is something very simple you uh, for investment 101 basic investment 101 the first investment is obviously relationship the second investment is 
really to get rid of your debt or your risk. I just call it risk. Risk could be your behavior, or could be doing whatever you know illegal activity to behavior, all the way to your uh, to your debt. Okay, so get rid of all those things, and then it's good. And the third one is figure out how to get income. Okay, get a job, go get a better job, quit your job, get a new job, work two jobs, whatever. It's just income. Okay. Once you solve those three things, now you have money. When you have money to go in, then and really this is the formula. If you want to take notes, this is literally the secret formula. When you want to invest, you want to make money, you have to invest your money. You're not going to make money investing the the drip you or or, or using Acorn or you know getting penny. You have to put your money into it to inv to make money. Um, and that's the that's the one thing in in a, that people don't forget to tell you in in studying in capitalist 101. You have to invest your money. So the more you more money you put in, the more money you're gonna make. So if you put in only a hundred dollars a month, th then you're probably gonna then you're probably gonna make some money. You're gonna collect some dividends, but you're not gonna you're not gonna make a lot more than somebody put a thousand dollar a month. I'm putting a thousand dollars a month into it, so therefore I can move. I, I, my return on the investment is much greater. Depend what I put in. So imagine somebody put two thousand dollars a month, or somebody put three thousand dollars a month. Your return on investment is just so much greater. Okay, that's really the basic. The re that's really the basic. If you can put as much money as you can into the investment, you're gonna get rich pretty fast, right? The less, the less you put in, you can still get to that amount, but it's gonna take you a lot longer, a lot longer, right? So the more you put in, equal to faster journey to get rich. The less you put in, the longer it's gonna get rich, right? All right, so understanding that, that is really my theory on going to investment. Back in December, in December, in, in Christmas day of last year, when I said, I'm gonna start investment strategy, that's what I went in with. I went in with that approach, with that mindset. I said, okay, I'm gonna go and try to figure out how can I increase my monthly payments? Because right now I'm gonna put a thousand in there. Okay, great. What what vehicle, what is it out there that can increase increase that monthly payments? Um well I guess I can go work at Uber or uh, an extra job. Well that's 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 a no-go for me. I guess I can go buy comic books or real estate or something. That's just way too much work for me. I don't even want to do that anymore. So I was like, well, dividends income, dividends. Dividend income give you passive income every month and that will increase it. So if you put a $1,000 and they give you dividend income, it will give you money. Guess what? Next thing you know, the first month you put a $1,000, the second month, let's say you get $10. I remember the first dividends I received, it was... Thirty dollars, thirty dollars. All right, I was so happy. I was so happy. I was like, "Ooh!" I told everybody about it. Like everybody's making fun of me. Like everybody was making fun of me. My, all my, all my whole family. This is it? Your investment journey. You only make thirty dollars a month. I said, "Yeah, but that's thirty dollars for the rest of my life." Like that company is always gonna pay me thirty dollars. I have Armor Residential. I have MPW. I have uh, Reality Income. I have. Uh, What's my first you know, 10 stock? I can't remember. It was like um, Alteria Group. All those collection of people of, of the stock gave me $30. Guess what? It's $1,030 now. It's $1,030. So that's what I just work on. I just work on these income first. Well, here's the good news. So fast forward many months later, many moons later, uh, I have fifty thousand uh, dollars. It's fifty thousand dollars, but I'm I'm in the red right now. I have, I have fifty thousand portfolio. I'm getting two thousand four hundred income. It's two thousand something right now, you know. Two thousand four hundred income. In September will be amount, that amount. It's 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 only off by a couple hundred dollars. Every time I buy a stock, let's just do a calculation. 2,400. This is this is not even my contribution. This is not even my contribution. This is just just the the dividend itself. 2,400 
divide by let's say let's say Tesla price is sixteen dollar okay because that's that was that's my average is sixteen dollars so I'm gonna use that so it's 150 times 0.83 I, every time every month I get hundred and twenty four dollar more every month Every month I get $124. That is that is that is why I, I did the, the way I did it. So I'm gonna show you my PowerPoint here real quickly and so you kinda of understand the timeline and stuff like that. Alright. So this is my current state. My contribution is $1,000, right? Bitto gave me about $100, 70 to $100. Tesla gave me $2,000, Clip gave me $300. This is the current situation I'm in. I'm getting, I'm, I'm putting $3,400 a month back into the investment. $1,000 is my salary. This is for my job. I have a direct deposit. If I get paid once a month, that direct deposit go right into go right into this uh, this fund, and that's where the three thousand four hundred. But in twenty twenty four, I'm gonna get four thousand dollar. So my the way I did it is I'm gonna increase my contribution to five hundred one thousand five hundred. So essentially, every time I get a pay raise. The federal government, we, we get pay raised pretty much 3%, 1% to 3% a year, uh, you know, depending on the new Congress, but I think we're gonna get about roughly 3% this year um, in January, February. So I'm gonna take that 3%, I'm gonna put it right in here. It's rough, it's a rough number. And by that time, I hope BitTo get to $1,000. It's not just BitTo, it's like every, every stock that paid the first week, like QYLD, RYLD, JP, JPEQ, those, those, all those first week stock. I just use Bitto as an indicator. I, I'm hoping Bitto get to $1,000. My second week, I hope Tesla get to $2,000. Well, it's it's already at $2,000, uh, so I don't need to increase anymore. My third week is kind of blank right now. That's why this whole week is kind of boring. I didn't buy anything. I didn't make any videos because I don't have any dividends coming in on third week. My fourth week, I'm going. I'm hoping to get a thousand dollar. Guess what? So what happened is, so this month, three thousand four hundred in September. What did I do with that money? Three thousand four hundred. I'm going to buy all into clips. So how many how many share do I have in clip right now? Uh, let me just show you real quickly. Where is my? Uh, I'm going to hide the PowerPoint here real quick. So I have. 400 shares of, where's my clip? I have 400 share of clip right now, okay? If the price is 18.22. So let's do this calculator. So 3,000, let's say I put all of them, 3,400. Now I'm probably not gonna buy a clip, but if Tesla price is still under $15, I'm, I'm gonna buy Tesla. I'm gonna put it all into Tesla because I have to bring my average down. But if, if test by the time I get paid, by the time uh, I get full paid in September, uh, if it go more than 15, then I'm just gonna go buy a clip, all right? So 3,400. Give me a second, I just, 3,400. Divide by $18.22, today's price. So I'm gonna get 186. So 186 plus 400, that's the share I have right now. So by the end of September, in going October, I will have 586 share. 586 share time, let's say they pay 83 cents also. I think they pay more, I think they pay like eight, uh, 86 cents on average. Now I'm gonna get $486. You see how fast it moves. If you just take all that dividends, put it in there. That's, that, that these compound work so fast, it's unbelievable. Especially you put in these high dividend yield uh, stocks. It's, it's unbelievable how fast these money move. 
This is why it's 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 crazy. So the goal for me is going back to my PowerPoint again. The goal for me is to generate 4,000. It's it's going to be more than 4,000 by the end of the by the end of 2024. Just think of I'm making $500. Uh, I'm making oh, I'm making over $100 uh, a month every month. So in 10 months, it's $1,000 in 10 months. But you know the compound rate is much faster than that. If I just put nothing between Tesla and Clip, Tesla and Clip, just those two alone. But there's so many other stock out there. You don't have to do Tesla and Clip. There's so many other ones, all right? It's going to break 4000 by the end of the year, this current rate. I'm going to go into 2025 with $5,000 a month. I start off with zero. And eventually, first week, and this is what my retirement is going to look like. My first week is $1,000 from, from these guys. My second week is from Tesla. My third week is from all these other all these other stocks that pay the third weeks. And my fourth week, I'm going to get clipped about $1,000. So I get $1,000 every month. But every, every month, I get the total of $5,000. I mean, I get $1,000 every week, not every month. Every month, I get a total of $5,000 for the rest of my life. Unless one of these guys go down pretty quickly. Who who here in their right mind gonna think that Tesla, Tesla, maybe KWeb go down if you start a war in China. Yeah, but it's only $1,000. I can move that money to something else. Who here thinks Tesla's gonna go down tomorrow, next week? It's not. It's not, it's not gonna happen. And if, if not, I just I just move into another yield max. Matter of fact, there's, there's more singular stock is coming out. In the next six months, there's going to be more yield max type. Right now, all we have is ProShare, CraneShare, uh, and yield max. And, and I think something else that do singular, singular uh, cover call. But there's going to be more. There's going to be more coming. And I have more option. But that's a lot of money, man. That's $5,000. This is why high yield dividend works. It work very well. I uh, and all right, with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to some of the guys here so they have some uh, opportunity to talk and jump in. Uh, all right, if you want to join in Discord and jump in the conversation, you just come into Discord and just jump in. And uh, for those who's new, please let me know you're new, and uh, we'll we'll do a shout out for you, and uh, and I appreciate it. And what do you what do you guys think of this? Anybody? Uh, all you do just unmute yourself. Top G. I don't know why you're muted. If you wanna, if you want to uh, jump in and say something, Jimmy. Ah. Oh, I can barely hear you, Jimmy. All right, we need to fix your mic, Jimmy. Um, so, okay, so I will, I will, uh, Jimmy, just work on your mic. We got, uh, we got Kenny here. Uh, he just came in. So this, I'm just kind of set up these things, you know, answer a lot of questions on this. Okay, so the reason I prep all this to answer this main question. Every time I post a YouTube video about Tesla, man, you have no idea how many comments. Just go read the comment. It's crazy how people ask these questions about Tesla. They always tell me that Tesla is high risk. Tesla is, um, you know, it's, it's losing its value. The NAV is depreciation, all this stuff. I'm going to explain it the way an immigrant will explain to you. This is, this is as easy as you can get. If you understand this, then you, you'll be fine. You'll be fine, okay? Back in January, I didn't know anything about Tesla. So when I first looked at the stock, I was going like, hey, what is, you know, I just did the stock screener and the stock screener said, Tesla, good high pain. This is what I saw. Back in January, I saw 99 cents. Like, what is this? This stock, on January 10, on January 10, let me, show, let me look at the, uh, Where's January 10th? Uh, one year. 
So January, this stock was somewhere around thirteen or fourteen dollar. I think it was like fourteen dollar. Like thirteen or fourteen dollar when I saw it, and they paid ninety nine cents. I'm like, what the heck? So I didn't know anything about it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go read it. So I I, I went to the Yield Max. I just typed in this. I just put it into Google, and all of a sudden I get to their website, and I went to look at their Proc Texas. I can't even pronounce the diagon word. And so I, I just did that, this, just just like this, exactly like this. I went in there, and I said, oh, this is great. Let me just go ahead and click on Tesla, and uh, and then I'm just gonna read it. Uh, I forgot what the number was back then. It was like 70% or something like that. It was ungodly. They pay monthly and so on. And then when you read the, the, the fun overview, this is the most simplest. This is well written, by the way. I read a lot of technical manual. If you're in the military, you spend a lot of time reading technical manual. And this is well written. Like I understood it. So for one, for, for one, for one percent, of your money, you give them money for one percent, their management fee. They'll they'll give you back essentially almost seventy percent yield. Their mission, their mission is to generate income strategy. It actively manage funds that seek to generate monthly income by selling, writing, calling option on Tesla. I have no idea what that means when I first read it. I didn't even know what option mean, but I I just take that word options and I put back into Google and say, okay, I guess they did they, they do some selling and writing on Tesla. Te Tesla pursue a strategy that aim to harvest compelling yield while retaining cap participation in the price gain of Tesla. So as as I read this whole thing. I figured out pretty quickly. I was like, oh my God, I gotta buy this. And I'm gonna explain to you in layman term. Think think of think of Yield Max as an accountant. Like you're gonna or, or like uh, like a, a finance, an investment finance. They do they, they set up a little shop. Jay and his boys set up a shop in the mall, and they and they have a big sign that said, Yield Max, we do option trading. So you don't have to do it. That's the, that's the name of their business. Yield Max, we do option trading so you don't have to do it. So, and you go in there, customer service, walk in and say, hey, Jay, introduce himself. Now you want some coffee? Great. Get some coffee and drinks. And he said, he said, and I said, hey, how can you get me money? Well, give me some money. So I gave him $10,000. Here's $10,000, man. He said, "Yep, I'm gonna charge you one percent. Are you go? You're good with that?" I said, "Yeah, one percent. You can take, you can take one percent off the earning. That's right, off the earning or the, the principal." He said, 10 percent off the earning. When you when you receive the earning, I'll take one percent. Are you good with that? Okay. Yeah, sure. In return, every month, every month, you're gonna give me a lot of money." Ten thousand dollar of uh, yield max. You're essentially getting almost sixty something. Let's just do the math here real quick again. Ten thousand dollar, all right. Divide by what was fourteen during the time when I was telling you. All right, that's seven hundred fourteen time point nine nine cents. That's what it was in January. Seven hundred seven hundred dollar for ten thousand dollar. He's gonna give me seven hundred dollar in return. The first thing I look at him, I said, hey, are you in the loan shark business? Are you related to Al Capone? No, no, man, this is legit. We are funded, we are supported, we are we are monitored by the SEC. This is an ETF. You know what ETF is? No, I don't know what ETF is. Yeah, it's, it's safe. It's pretty safe. Matter of fact, if you don't trust us, all you do is take the money and sell and go do something else. You don't even, you don't have to call me, you don't have to write me, you don't have to visit my office. You, in the click of your mouse, you can you can liquidate your entire Tesla stocks and move on to another stock. But if you put money in our stock, we'll give you seven hundred dollars if you give me ten thousand dollars. That is it. That is essentially Yield Max business. Yield Max does option trading for you. You take this ten thousand dollars, you give it to them, they do option trading, so you don't have to do it. 
that's like paying Kenny. Kenny is our option trading expert here in our channel. It's like paying Kenny money so he can trade for us. But for whatever reason, I don't understand why people keep using all these other arguments to me. First of all, I don't know what you're arguing about. When every time you argue with me, I'm like, dude, you can win because I don't know what you're talking about. They talking about, hey, it's it's high yield, it's it's risk, it's a um, you're gonna fail, nav erosions, you're not gonna make an income, you're gonna lose money on all stuff. Uh, dividend yield traps, it's a scam and all stuff. So so being a, a military guy, I gotta ask the logic question to all those people ask me. So the first question I ask them is always, what is the risk? And then they would list a whole bunch of things on the risk. And the second question I ask them is that, let me just give this perspective. In the history of the New York Stock Exchange, in the history of the New York Stock Exchange, how many, how many income, income strategy, income focused ETF, income focused ETF have failed? They haven't told me yet. I've been asking that question since January. I, I asked I asked one of the guy on the YouTube channel, he delete my he delete my message. How many of time in the history of the New York Stock Exchange? The New York Stock Exchange has been around since the 1800s. In the history of the New York Stock Exchange, how many income focused ETF have failed? And then you they, they can't answer that question. Then what is the risk? That's that's what I want to know. What is the risk? What are you afraid of? Or what are you selling? What are you trying to tell me? And then we realize it was really it was just propaganda. There's 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 somebody go find and get that answer. Every time they tell me about these things, they're like, okay, well, what ETF I fail? What ETF cannot does not pay dividend? Oh, this ETF gonna be a single one. One of the YouTube uh, comments like this gonna be a uh, a penny stock here soon. This ETF gonna be a penny stock. Well, name me another ETF that became a penny stocks. So I want to know how they fail. And so that's and when you ask these questions, when you ask these questions, people don't realize. So, so here's here's something me and Kenny we kind of figured out how to answer these questions. What people don't realize that the singular, singular stock, the singular ETF model, this is brand new. It's only been around in the last, you know, a year and a half or so. It's brand new. The cover call strategy is brand new too. But this is a singular stock ETF. The risk of a singular stock ETF the number one risk in a single stock ETF is the stock. That's the underlining stock that it's that is based on. That is based on its cover call on. So clip, the underlying uh, is KWeb. Tesla, the underlining stock is Tesla. And it's so on and so on. OARK, the underlying stock, is the ARK fund. Apple is Apple. NVD is NVIDIA. AMZ is Amazon. They're all singular stocks. That's the risk. That's the biggest risk. That's the risk. So the question is, do you believe in it? If you don't believe in Tesla, if you think Tesla's gonna fail tomorrow, then yeah, then don't buy any yield max. That's what they should argue from. So every time somebody tells you about Tesla, why, why it's a huge risk, or why it's a scam, or whatever word, whatever adjective you want to put in front of it, then just ask them what is the risk. And then and then and then and they will list a whole laundry of things. And then you say, okay, well, name me an ETF. Before we talk about this ETF, name me an ETF in the history of New York Stock Exchange that meet this criteria. Let's talk about that. 
They haven't given me one. I have, I have been, I, I, just think about it. I've been making YouTube video for about uh, three, four months now. And I do live streaming every two weeks, every two days, uh, two days a week. And one of the questions I always ask is that, show me the proof. And they haven't, they, no one have provided me that information yet. And so, so as a result, a lot of time that we we are emotionally biased towards certain things. We're not thinking logically on things. If you want to, if you want to make money, think about how other people make money. Like Ethan's, I'll give you an example. Is he is he in Discord or Ethan's here? Ethan came up with this ideas of he's gonna sell Tesla stock. And then he's gonna buy. He's gonna buy into Clip, and he's gonna sell Clip and buy into Tesla. So, I didn't reject it. None of us. No, there's not n the people hang out with me. None of us reject that plan. We just don't know how he's doing it. So you know what we did? We spent the next six hour trying to figure out how it works. Because. Ethan is a lot more successful than I am. I have $50,000 in my account. I have $50,000 in my account. Ethan has a million dollars. Dude, that guy figured it out. He knew how to make money. He's not telling, he's, he's, he's trying to find an experimental way to generate more money. So guess what? I gotta work twice as hard. I don't know how many hours he put into trying to figure that out. I put six hours a day. Matter of fact, I produced two videos. I talked to like 20 different people. I have like clinics going on. And then and then Kenny just kind of like, you know what? Let's just ask Ethan how he did it instead of guess, keep guessing. Because we want to learn. We want to know how we, they do it. Instead of, instead of telling people that Tesla is not a good stock, Let's ask the reason why we why there's a whole group of people putting millions of dollars into the stocks. What are they doing right and wrong? And here's the crazy part. I don't know why you this is this is the crazy part that people uh, would literally put their nose into this. And let me just show you uh, stock analysis again. This is crazy, man. When you see this. Remember, I start this in January. In January, there's people already bought the stocks. There's people I interact with, they already own Tesla. They own like a thousand here, two thousand there, and stuff like that. Those guys, they've been getting paid on average 83 cents from January 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. For eight months straight, they've been getting paid that amount. Matt, been Matt, who's in Discord right now, he's been receiving twelve thousand dollars since ever since he started this thing. Just think about that. Twelve thousand dollars—that's how much he put in. Some people put in a lot more, some people in less. Every month. Hey, Matt. Hey, you going? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, look, it, you know what? These things are put there to test us. Make it while it's there and don't worry about it when it's not. Like, it's pretty quick to rotate out of one thing and in the next. Yeah. It's as risky or not as risky as the next thing. Yeah, it is what it is, mate. Like, you know, um, I, I don't know what to say about it. I'm just... I want to say blasé is probably the right word. Like, it's there while it's there. Make yeah. money from it while it is and, and, and move on to the next thing when it's not. You know, it, it's not... Yeah. Not rocket science. It is not rocket science at all. It's not, man. I'm telling it, you, it's this... It's very straightforward. It's, easy, it's an easy way to be inv involved with options without doing the work yourself. Yes. If I can pay somebody 0.08% a month to do it for yeah. me... And it's taken out of the dividends. Couldn't care less. I totally agree. Matt is now. Well, <laughs> while I think of it, I've, I've got a question for you. Yeah. 
By the way, this Tell is me about your, the, your bird yes. Bird. What happened to your bird? <laughs> uh, the bird's here. He's oh. just being quiet. Okay. Okay. So, what's your question? Tell me about your trip to Brisbane. <laughs> All right. We got to take a few minutes uh, here. Uh, Kenny, I'm gonna get you li uh, line up here next because the next, the next, uh, the next topic we're gonna talk about is what do we think the dividend price will be for Tesla? And Kenny, Kenny and I, we spent about a couple hours trying to figure this. Uh, so Kenny, you get lined up uh, for next coming up. Uh, so okay. I I'm gonna share you a story that I, I, uh, my first trip to uh, Brisbane. Uh, back in uh, this is in my uh, early you know my first year in the uh, in the marine corps so i'm i'm a lonely private you know like i've got what my rank i think i was a pfc anyway we arrived to uh to sydney our ship arrived to sydney and then we bust to brisbane and then we eventually uh settled into rockhampton for our training area so during the during the weekend they let us out but you, you have to go with your Liberty buddy. So you can't just go off on your own. So my Liberty buddy was these two boys and uh, th all they want to do is meet Australian girl. And I didn't want to meet any girl because I have a girl. So I didn't want to, so I'm just chilling and they met two girls at this restaurant and they went off. So they went off somewhere else and they left me. That's the one thing you don't do. And, uh, but they did that. Of course, I'm totally lost on my own. I'm sitting in this restaurant and uh, the couples that set the table next to us kind of heard this whole conversation. And I keep trying to tell them, I said, hey man, you can't leave me, man. It was like, this is a little bit. And so they realized we're, two, uh, we're all three of us are Americans. And this couple decided to ask me, uh, say, hey, you wanna, you know, you come hang out, come hang out with me. I was a little skeptical. I was a little, I was a little nervous. Like, I don't know if I wanna hang out with a total stranger, Australian stranger. So no big deal. So we're in Brisbane. Brisbane is a big city. You should think of like San Diego, like Boston. You know, it's not a small town. It's about a million people in Brisbane, right? Is it a million people? Well, I think it's about a million. And so yeah, it's about two and a half. Oh yeah, so it's a big city. Well, anyway, we went yeah. from this restaurant. I jump into their van and they drove me out of the city. And next thing you know, all I see is forests and like woods. I'm like, what is going on? Like. So it got, I'm getting spooky and getting scared. And the whole time I'm coming up with a way to figure out how to fight these guys. I was like, okay, I'm gonna figure, okay, I can take out the guy, but I, 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 I'm definitely sure I can take out the girl. As long as they don't use guns or knives, I'm pretty sure I can do it. Hand to hand, I, I was pretty good at hand to hand combat. I was like, up to this point, I think I can, you know, in my platoon, when we do a hand to hand combat training, I was pretty good. I was probably gonna take out half of my platoon. So I was like, I was like, I got this. I got this. I can, I, I, I'm pretty sure I can survive. I got to figure out how to take the vehicle and just, and because they just, he just drive me to the woods. I was like, what's going on? Like, he's going to bury me. He's going to kill me. I, and plus I have no, you know, I don't have Australian money. I only have is like US dollars. So like worst case scenario, I lose like a hundred dollars, but it's not bad. I mean, I just lose my credit card, my ID card, man, what, what is he doing? So he took me all the way to this wood and he has a cabin, like a house, or like a house on a lake. And it's a nice home. And he said, hey, there's my home. I'm like, okay, good. I'm trying to figure out a way, you know, to either get out or try to at least, at least uh, defend myself. The next thing you know, they got this food. They, they brought the food in. They're just sitting there talking, explaining to me. And I'm telling you, I've never been more scared in my life the whole time. I'm just thinking it's like in a movie, like send in the gimp. That's all I thought about was like send in the gimp. And, uh, and I was just thinking a way to, uh, to fight these guys. And I, could, I think they can tell that I was a little nervous uh, but because by that time it was kind of late now. It was, we were talking about almost midnight and I, was, and I told them, I said, hey, I probably need to go. And they're like, you can just sleep here. And I'll tell you, sleeping there is one of the scariest uh, evolution I've ever done in my life. I was like, I, I was so scared the whole time. The whole time I'm thinking the husband and wife would just jump me with their leather suit on or something like that. Uh, no, but it turned out the opposite. I, I, I hate to, I, I guess I killed this story. I didn't tell it right, but no, I, uh, so the next morning I woke up, nothing happens and uh, we ate breakfast and then they took me to the zoo. They, they showed me around. And uh, at the end of it, they dropped me off at the bus stop. And I say, why, why are you guys so nice? What's going on? They're like, we don't get to meet a lot of American. We don't get to meet a lot of foreigners. 
and when we get to meet one, we, you know, we, I figure you guys, you know, came here to train to help, and you American military, we, we know you, you're pretty safe. And uh, I'm like, that's a pretty bold assumption, but uh, well, thank you, I appreciate it. And I told the, I told the guy, I was like, hey man, I, to be honest, at the first night, I was really scared. I thought you were literally gonna come out with a leather suit and, and, a, and a donkey suit or something like that and, and jump me. I was like, I was afraid of my life. He said, he stopped laughing. He said, no, man, we're not like it. We're not like that. <laughs> okay, do you like that it's story, man? It's not how I thought it was gonna go. Huh? It's not how I thought it was gonna go. <laughs> I kind of ruined this. I kind of ruined the suspense uh, by telling the story. No, 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 no. <laughs> I already knew it, but I wanted you to tell it. <laughs> I'll tell you, Australian is one of the most successful, one of the most, uh, one of the most friendliest people in in the world. I've been in Australia many, many times. After that, um, when you work for the uh, for the for the MEF, I work for the MEF, which is the most, the highest headquarter you can get in the Marine Corps in the Pacific. And uh, and so the MEF own the rotation, the, the the Darwin rotations also own all the training in Australia. So I every time one of those exercises happen, I had to go I go down there and visit them. And uh, so I've been to Australia a lot after that. And I'll tell you, every single time I fly in, it's it's always an an eye opener. If you never get a chance to do anything, go visit Australia. Uh, it's it's one of the, well whatever you do don't jump in the water when there's a crocodile. Do not jump in the water when there's crocodile. Yeah. So that's that's my only recommendation. Crocodiles in Australia is no joke, no joke. Is it, you agree, Matt? Yeah, but you know, uh, in Brisbane you're okay. There's no crocodiles in Brisbane except yeah. for you know Australia Zoo and stuff like that. But once you get up to Rockhampton, they, they, you can see them in the Fitzroy River. <laughs> I, I was in a boat one time. Uh, I was in a boat and I was just watching the uh, riverboat guys. And one, of, and so I'm on the beach and I'm just asking. You know, I'm, I'm with my Australian uh, exercise officer and I'm just you know watching this whole thing. And I'm watching the reconnaissance team swimming in. And I'm like, so I, I was like, hey, why are they not in the water? What's I, I don't I don't understand. What's the point of having a recon training insertion and not in the water? And the Australian guy start laughing at me. I said. I could, he said, you never been to Darwin before? I said, no, it's my first time. He said, have you seen the water? I said, no, let's go look at the water. There's crocodiles everywhere. <laughs> there was crocodiles everywhere. That's why we don't swim in the water. I was like, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was funny. It's a funny attack. Well, Matt, hey, thank you so much. I, uh, no thanks. worry. Yeah, so let's uh, let's go back and talk about Tesla again because that's why we're all here and we want to. You know. Kenny, are you here? Yeah, yeah, brother. All right, so Kenny and I, we we've been trying to figure out what the dividends rate for this thing for September. Uh, so for those who saw the video, uh, Kenny, uh, he was trying to teach me about option trading, and. Now, here's the great thing about owning Tesla. You don't have to learn how to do option trading. You don't. You just give money to Yield Max, they charge you 1%, and they will give you a whole bunch of money back in return. And uh, so with that, you know, it's just, I would just say, enjoy. Enjoy, um, you, know, your, you know, enjoy your dividends and, and collect it. But for those who advance and wanna know how Tesla works, can he buy a lot of Tesla stock and he actually trade with them? Uh, we're going to go over a little bit here and uh, we have some questions lined up. For those who have questions about Tesla and stuff like that, so the first question I have, let me pull Tesla up so this way, you know, because today is Sunday, we're going to talk about tomorrow. Uh, there's two major concerns about Tesla uh, because what is going on? Why there's no data? What? Oh, because it's dividend, that's it. Current price for Tesla right now is 239 after our hour. We believe it's gonna go up. So I start I start the uh, I prep the show with this. Um, Elon came out with this video uh, for the FSD, you know, uh, version 12 for the Tesla autopilot. I've been driving Tesla for a long time. I love Tesla, I love the autopilot, I use autopilot like it's Kool-Aid, like you 
turn it on and it's just good move. But it still has some limitation, you know, a lot of limitation. But when I saw version 12, now you, you gotta imagine how bold this strategy is. He's live streaming. If, if he was, if, if the engineer, the marketing people, the public affair people for Tesla, they probably told him, hey, Elon, boss, you can't live stream this thing because what happened if it go wrong? What happened if the car didn't turn the way it's supposed to turn? What happened the bike didn't cross? What happened people? What happened when we have construction and all those things? If you live stream this, we, we might be exposing that we're not, we're, we're not ready. But it just shows you that he was so confident with version 12 when he live streamed and that live stream was gold mine, gold mine. Everything happened in that live stream. I mean, there was construction, the, the autopilot went around, people crossing, it, it stopped, it moved, speed bump, it has direct, and the key part, I did not know this, I did not know this, and, and Elon mentioned it, that there's not a single code, there's not a single person write a code to describe all that I just said. The AI, the, the, the autopilot AI figured it out. They said, here's a sign, it figured out the sign for itself. Here's a bicycle, what to do with a bicycle, uh, what to do with pedestrian crossing, what to do with a speed bump. The AI figured it out based on the information it received. That's unbelievable. This is the first time I didn't know. I didn't know version 12 is written by AI. It's run by AI. I thought version 12 is still somebody write codes on it and try to figure out these things. And uh, so I am impressed with that information. This stocks is going to go up. It's going to go up. That that video literally opened the door. Uh, it's going to open the door like like it's going to go over 240. So my concern, my question to, I, I prep all that because I, I, this is the first question I asked Tesla, uh, I asked uh, Elon, uh, not Elon, I, Kenny, I just call you Elon. Oh, that's good. Is that, is that a good, is that an honor? Uh, I'll take the money. <laughs> okay, so here is the question. So currently right now it's sitting at 239. There is a call and put, where is it? Out there for... September 15, this is, so remember how Tesla does this and uh, how Tesla does their synthetic call. They buy long, long-term precision, uh, long-term precision. We don't know when they bought this September 15. We don't know when they bought it. They could buy it back in June, July, uh, or, or way back. They bought it, so they bought long-term, and then they use that as the collateral and for all these other trade in between. So they, they have a call on 915. That's a huge chunk right there, right? 20,000 share. And then they then they have a put for exact same amount also on the same date. Okay, so that's how that's how by doing that, that's how they get the synthetic call of it. So they don't own the Tesla stock. They what they own is the option, the option of it. And they use that option to trade all these closer one, close to the money one. Is that, uh, am I explaining correct, Kenny? Yes, yes. They They're closer to the money. To yeah, so you see, here's one, here's one for, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's see. 265. Oh, what happened? For... They also went, here's one for nine, September 1, uh, for 230. Well, now they're all 1020. Here's 9 1, or here's 9 1 for 242. All right. And so, what happened to the 915? Oh, yes, here's one for... Uh, oh, there's one at the bottom, and yeah. then there's one at the top, the 915 ones. Okay, yep. Okay, I got it wrong. I'm sorry. So, so that's how they do it. That's how they do it. I kind of figured this out. I don't know much about it. But the first question I asked Kenny is this. Okay, so it's 239. What happened What happened to Tesla stock, uh, Tesla, when, when there's only two things happen? Either they go over the price... Or they go under the price. If they go over the price sooner, what happened? If they go under the price and by 915, what happened to this to this call? Because remember, that action will generate our dividend. Whatever earned will generate our dividend. So this is the key because this is the last week. This is literally the last week. Whatever happened this week here, it's it's gonna be the money maker. So the first question I have is Kenny, I hope you can explain this. Well, I know mm -hmm. you can't explain this, but uh maybe make it clear uh, for the everybody else 
What happened when the money does not make it? What happened when when the price of the stock right now is 239? What happened when it's reached 270 by this Wednesday? Let's say then then um so the two the two the two by this Wednesday so um, if you look at the one at the bottom, you can see that we're down 55 million on yeah. those 265 puts. Yeah. So we're going to gain value of that, which is going to cause Tesla stock to rise. So if you look at those, remember last week, those 265 puts were going for like we owed like 97 million on those. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So if we go up again, so the value of. Tesla is going to be way higher because that 55 million you see right there, that's going to go way down probably to like 10 million. So that that means, you know, obviously you have more assets. So the, the value of the stock is going to go up because Tesla is going up. Yep. Um, but we right now he made some some moves now that basically locks up. You can see that he sold those calls, those 235. He sold that 242 call. So that's going to take away, um, that's going to cap out some of the profits at 242, but it's only 600. So it's not a lot that he has right there. Yep. So, but if we get up there, we, we good, man. That's why I said we, if we can rise this week the way I'm thinking, 70 cents, that's what I'm counting on this week. So if, if it go 270, we win. If it goes 270, we're out of those. We, he can, he can reset these, um, 265s. Yeah. And oh, well, obviously, you have know, to reset it because they're going to be out. Uh, they, it, it's worth, essentially worth it. So who, who in that regard, who wins? Is it the buyer or the seller? Uh, this, the buyer, the, the seller always wins. Yeah. It's just whenever the buyer gets money, you know what I'm saying? As, as a seller, yeah. you always get your premium. Yeah. So he's going to get his money no matter what. Yeah, as a seller, you get your money no matter what. It's already in your hand the second you place to trade you have the money in your hand yeah but he's not that because it's 270 now and that thing does not do until september 15 so the the buyer still may not exercise his option to take it so it's still yeah, sitting he, there but he doesn't we don't need to wait for him we can just jelly roll the options ah. based on the amount of money we made and then and then right and, and then he can make more money yeah and then he can make more money right so we don't have to sit on these for you know what I mean, and for expiration, if he thinks he's good where he's at, he can just jelly roll the option and get something else. Yeah. So, so that that. Hmm? Oh no, I'm sorry. Um, are you about to say something? I'm gonna interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying that's the that's the, based on what I've seen him doing. That's the main strategy that he does. Is sure. if he's up like 70, 80 percent of the option, he just rolls into something else. So last week, if you if you watch the live stream last week on Sunday, exactly Sunday last week, I forgot what the date is. Um, let me just get the date real quickly here. Um, it was it was the twentieth. So if you watch the video on the twentieth, you and I were talking about the two twenty five. These guys, yeah, <laughs> yep. And uh, and we we said that if they don't if they go over two twenty five during the time it was two fifteen. But if they go 225, we may be in trouble. Okay, so do you change your mind on that because they do the jelly roll thing? So, that's right. No. Um. So he rolled into these. Look at these now. If you look at these two, this 225 right here. Yep, this yep. is uh, October 20. Yeah, he rolled into October 20. Yep. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So yep. that's all. If he kept the one week, those would have been. He he basically took the L, but he rolled into something else to regain that money back. Yeah. So essentially, they, they are continuing to make money, and uh, Tesla and uh, Tesla is slowly increasing. As long as Tesla is slowly increasing, uh, well, right now it's only one week. So he, he can he make money, can he do it every day daily, or or he has to do it every two three days? Uh, uh, as he said, he has no rules. He can make a two two day trade, whatever he wants to do, oh. the same day. Oh my God, he can maximize this thing by Friday. Yes. So that's the that's the give and take of an active account, right? Yeah. Um, you can you you have to trust the manager to make the trades when he needs to make them. All right. So based on that information alone, I am more confidence now. I am more confidence now that our dividend is going to be more than eighty three cents. 
So the average 83 cents, my prediction last week was 86 cents. Now I do the prediction based on historical and he's doing based on numbers. So it's a two different prediction here. And um, so my prediction was 86 cents, which is three cents higher than the average. Kenny, are you are you standing by with your this afternoon prediction? Are yep, you, yep, yep. What I'm was it, 77 cents 70. you said? Yep, I'm still saying with the 70 because 70. We, we can't get we can't get all the upside money. We can't get the money from the put. Yeah. So last week, uh, the, no, on the twentieth, you said it was fifty cents or fifty-five cents. So now, you, now you moving up. Because, to... Yes, because he sold those contracts. He sold last week. He made money off those. Yeah. And he had to roll some of them. Yep. Seventy. All right. So guys, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's your answer there. If you have not seen the video. You have to go watch the video today. Kenny explained it in painful detail how he came up to 77 cents. But um, but uh, for, for the purpose of this live stream, it, he pretty much, uh, it's going to be 70, he's, he's looking at 77 cents. How many how many of you disagreed or think it's going to be something else? I'm just curious. Uh, does anybody in Discord want to jump in on that? And what do you think it, what do you think it is? You got you got me thinking it's not 86 cents based on historical data and charts, and then and then uh, based on uh, Kenny based on math and logic here, and he believes it's going to be 70 cents. Anybody else want to try a different numbers? Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, so it is it is uh, so 77 cents for. We got 71 from FW. You know what I mean? My man FW rocking 70. <laughs> FW believe it's 71. <laughs> oh, Matt, it won't be 83, Matt. You can't be on his team. You got to be on my team. So you need to cross that out and put 70. <laughs> Love music. Somebody said 420. Oh, my God. Hog Farmer needs to go. <laughs> 420? It yeah, 420. Hog Farmer said 420. May, 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 I think he meant to say 442. Uh, Hog Farmer. Hog Farmer is joking. All right. So we got a 90 cents. We got a 71, 69, a 90 cents, 77 cents, uh, 92, 92. 92 is getting very popular. All right. I'll tell you right now, this is a much better. I like this. I like this. You can actually. Now, here is the kicker. Once, once we figure out how much he makes you you need to know like if for 30 million dollar he makes 80 cents or 60 cents we can project it in the future that's correct kenny yes yes that's what we want to do yeah right now we don't know so what what we in the future we can this act this prediction going to be a lot closer because if we if we predicted so let's say he pay 83 cents again average 83 cents and he pay 83 cents again well what happened to if he generate thirty million dollars, so thirty million dollar roughly equal to eighty three cents, then we can make that that assumption is going to get a little closer. It's going to get a um, lot closer. You agree? But, or and it? also, also, it has to do with the amount of shares, right? Yeah. So if there's more people, that thirty million is going to be less. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Okay, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You got a seventy seven cents prediction. You got eighty three cents and uh wow how much uh, i got to be flat but there's see people 79 82 yeah we'll, we'll see we'll see what it comes in we, you got uh, yeah i got one two people three people on my side majority of them on your side yep <laughs> i believe in the numbers you know what i'm saying the yeah. number big casino says 93 yeah in discord um so listen, let's, listen, let's, you guys uh, need to get on the 70 yeah. team, all right? Yeah. I, I'm i pretty, I've I'm, I'm been doing really well so far. I think, uh, you know, you guys give me some credit for it. All right. So one of the questions that's asked, okay, after the dividends is, how does the dividend pay? What determine, like, what, what, this is the, this is like every newbie question. I, and I don't know how to answer that question. Why the dividends at eighteen dollar? Why does the dividends drop? That's that's the question. You know, let's go. Let's go look at one day chart, uh, one month chart. When is when's the last payment? Um, the 
you'd have to look at the thing. Um, so a lot of the charts they'll adjust for dividends, um, but some of them don't. So it just depends on where you get your chart from. Yeah, let me see. Okay, I'm I'm hoping we can get a good chart. First of all, I hate these candle. Um, all right, so I'm looking at a chart here. All right, so the last payment was July. Uh, it was August twenty fourth. Mm -hmm. Which is somewhere around. Am, am, is my face in the way right now? Let me move my. Let me move my no, face. No. All right. So. Oh my God! This chart sucks so bad. Let's go to Yahoo. I, I, I never went to school to learn how to read charts, so I'm I'm not very, not very good at chart. All right, six months. Six months good. I, I, we just did one month. I just want to show you the July one. Uh, when, when when was the dividend date? I think it was right here. Dividend X date was. Somebody has the X date. Uh, what was the X date? Let me go to look at the, my sheet sheet here real quick. Who has the X date? Um, I would have to look at my phone to figure it out. The X date was on August was eight four. Okay. Which was right here. This dip right here. Yep. Why why does it do that? Okay. So so, so the price is fifteen dollar. That's the day before X date. On X date, mm -hmm. the price is the price is fourteen thirty three. Why does it do that? Okay. That's that's a All newbie right. question that everybody always yep. wanna know. So I'm gonna explain this as simple as it can be. Because we know Tesla's paying seventy cents, right? Um, so let's say that we're at $14 on the X dividend day, right? And uh, Jay from Yieldmax said he basically does his declaration, which is them sending official paperwork to the SEC and everybody telling them that, hey, we're paying 70 cents. That's how much money we made. And it's going to be all it's going to be all um, cash that we have. Right. We made that money. So that day, the SEC, the, the trading, the, the trading company is basically going to drop the stock by 70 cents because they have to pull 70 cents out of the stock and give it to us all. Right. So basically, the next morning, we're going to start at 1330 because 70 cents came out of the stock, because if no value came out of the stock and they gave us 70 cents, basically. Um, the stock is val the value of the stock is not seventy cent, not fourteen dollars because the a the stock doesn't have the assets to match fourteen dollars. It, it has the assets to match thirteen thirty. You know, so that is basically what it is. Is your stock is basically based on your assets and speculation, right? So there's no there's no speculation involved in in this because it's so, not Tesla itself. Um. Let me see if I can do full screen here. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. uh, where is it? August. Let me just do one month again. Uh, August 3rd and 4th, right here and right here. So $16.65 uh, $16 and, and a drop to $15.58. If I if I go back and look at the dividends, anybody, uh, what, was the, what was the dividend? 83 cents? Mm -hmm. So if I minus 83 cents, this should be the number. Is that correct? Is that what you're trying to say? Now, this is a closing we should, price. We don't oh, know what that, is, that happens in the pre-market. So you have to get like pre-market data yeah. and everything. You know what I'm saying? You have to have you have to have like the pre-market data. Right here, you have day data. You need pre-market data to see exactly where we open. Okay. I yes. So um, there's no way to know. On this day, there's no way to see it on this. The, on this day, it opened at fifteen ninety seven, and then, when they say and it closed at sixteen right sixty five. So, so when they say open there, based on, on what uh, you use, it could be it could be open at nine thirty or open at pre market. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know that. But uh, I'm assuming I'm assuming this is open at market at at nine thirty. Fifteen ninety seven. Yeah. Yeah. That's open at market, so that doesn't that doesn't matter in the sense of it because it is done at zero four in the morning in the pre market. That's when it's done. Oh, okay. but essentially, um, take eighty three cents from this high. From the stock. 
from this yep, from from where it closed the day before now is this true for 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 every stocks pretty much um if it pays a dividend yes it it, it is gonna do that somebody said stay away from jelly roll or i'll, or I'll end up in the toilet again <laughs> oh that's funny how i was in the toilet last time yes uh, yeah yeah i was tra i was traveling man leave me alone all right uh, <laughs> uh let me see this thing i said uh oh my god well we have so many we have so many toilet jokes because of you yeah yeah i know i'm i'm sorry man no, i couldn't it, yeah, that's the, the only place i could what, be what... or outside and then my phone end up uh battery end up um dying yeah so that is um that i i still do, i still have a hard time understanding that because i always okay. thought in the world of stock uh you make money this is what my understanding is. So somebody tell me this. Let's say this is ETF, which is different. But let's say you're Coca-Cola. I'm selling, I'm selling Coke and I have extra revenue. I have extra cash. I pay everything all off. I have extra cash. And now I'm paying my stockbroker. I'm staying my I'm paying my I'm paying my uh, my uh, my share owner. Why is that why is that related to the price of the share? I, I, I thought I thought they give you a money that is separate from the share price because they it, as i said to you again that it's basically the assets that they have so even the same with coca-cola they they basically have a certain amount of balance so if they're saying hey they don't know exactly how much money they have but if they're like hey we're giving you this then they need to pull that out of the stock they yeah i i mind boggling me. I did not know that. I, uh, to think about it, up to this point, I have no idea that I did not need to take it out, out literally on the share price to pay yes. the dividends. Yes. So that's when they say nav erosion is if they didn't have the money. Yeah. Right. And they're basically giving you a dividend. When they declare the dividend, they're basically in that document, they're going to say out of the 70 cents, 20 cents is return of capital. So what's going to happen is that 20 cent worth of money, they're going to get that money from from whoever does the the lowering of the price to give to you. So basically they're giving you back your own money and pushing the stock down lower cuz remember when they take the dividend out the stock goes down. So that's why you don't want return of capital because it the stock is going down. So, and you're giving me money. Oh, let, let me see how I can re-explain this way. So the NAV, which is the total assets minus yes. the liability and divide by the number of share. That's the NAV, right? NAV is, yeah. NAV, think of NAV as everything the company owned. The the electricity, the, the, the chair, the table, the car, the trucks, the bottles, everything, everything that the company owned, including the workers in some case. So, so if you were to liquidate the entire company and you minus the liability, and and you 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 essentially you, if you liquidate everything and divide by share, that's the net that's the net price. And essentially, that's the price of the 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 stock. So uh, the market price may be let's say like here the market price may be sixteen dollar and sixty five cents, but the net price could be fourteen dollars. You know. Yep. Or okay. it could be seventeen. It oh, could it could be, be 17. seventy. Or it could be high. Yeah, it could be yeah. high or low. The net price is the true value of the company, and then the ship, the the share price, or the stock price is the market value price. What what the consumer want? Or uh, is is there a way? Can can somebody teach me how to read this real quick? How how do I know? How do I pull the NAV price? Let's say it on on Tesla real quick, so I can make a point. I always um, want to know. I, is it, I I get that stuff from my broker. Um, I see it right there. I don't use Yahoo for my stuff. Oh, hi. Does anybody know uh, how to use Yahoo? How do I pull? How do I see the NAV price in Yahoo? Oh, actually, let me check. There's a way that there's a page you can find it on. Let me. Because I want to I want to know what the NAV price for Tesla is. 
is is there, there's a line there's a there's like a yellow line and somebody I, I read it somewhere there's a yellow line that's associated to it uh and they that's it's it that's the NAF price of his Tesla so so for Tesla our nav should yeah for Tesla our nav is what it what the stock price is usually stocks is supposed yeah to be. ETF it, it, it makes sense ETF is <laughs> but but Tesla it's not the same because Tesla no Tesla will be it will be plus or minus like one or two cents check um that. yeah I'm 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 checking it just to make sure but what is the nav price for Tesla oh what Tesla stock Tesla? itself Tesla yeah oh oh that's so that won't have I don't think that will list it on the website because they have oh. all these bonds and all this shit. So what what, okay. what what I'm what I'm what my point is that now I now I understand it because the NAV price so when when you make income, so when you receive income for that month, uh from like Coca Cola example I was using, when you receive it, guess what? The NAV went up. That's right, you your entire NAV went up, therefore also the stock, the the market value also go up. But it, pretty much everything just went up because you have income coming in. So now you got to turn around and give that income back to the shareholder. So essentially, you're taking that away from the NAV. Is that is that a better way to explain that? Yeah, that yeah. That's, so that's basically what you're doing right there. Is you're taking away. Bingo! The, you're my light just my light bulb. Away. I, I understood it now. I understood it. This is. This is better education than than paying some community college six hundred dollars a month. I just I, I just I just explain where why the price dropped. I could not understand for the life of me up to this point. I have no idea. I could not tell you why it dropped like that. I literally thought that's just the supply and demand. There's a lot of people. They they people go they they buy to gen, to get their the the ex date. To get the dividends and they sell it. I thought people sell it so they get out of it the next day because they don't need they don't need to own their stocks. They're only going in. They're only going in to get the the dividends. Does that make sense? Yep. I wonder who uh, thought yep, I, you got it done. Now, do who? I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one to think that way. Uh, some old people did it back then. I don't know. Some old people created that. Well, let, let's ask that. All right, uh, Matt, you're, you're you're the old people category. Is that true? <laughs> that again? So, well, he said he said some old people do that, but um, created that whole old. thing. No, so, of um, taking out the dividend out of the stock. So people uh, no. buy into the dividends, uh, like they the re so, so this is what I thought. I thought the reason why the dividend drop is because of the supply and demand. So on the X date, a lot of people buy into it so they can c get the dividends, and then of course they don't okay. need the dividend anymore. They don't need they don't need to own the stock. So the next day they sell it. So therefore, the that's why the share price drop, uh, the stock price. No, dropped. that's not that's not the case. What it is, NAV is net asset valuation. So yeah. all of the assets minus all of the liabilities of the company or of the yeah. ETF or, or whatever. Okay. So because they give you money in the form of a dividend, yeah. the share price automatically drops by the amount of the dividend on the ex dividend date. So it's not re free money, it's returning to you what's yours. So they need to take that from the asset. Yeah. Okay, and the dividend amount, because it's easy for people to understand, is shown as a dividend yield based on a price of that asset, the stock price, yeah. on that day or at that time on that date. That's the only correlation to it. Apart from that, the dividend amount, yeah. you know, 83 cents, yep. has, has no relationship to anything else. It's just returning a portion of the profit to you. So it's got to come out of the asset because they've given that away. The company doesn't control it anymore. Now it makes so much sense. I did not know how to answer that question, but now it makes so much sense. So essentially that's why the price dropped roughly the amount of the dividends. 
Yeah, the, the that, day of it. the it's in a nutshell. You're taking it from one bank account and putting it into another bank account that they don't control. So the net asset value drops by that amount, which brings the price down by that amount. Yep. Bingo. Learning has a cure. Oh, well, it's good. <laughs> it's been useful today. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, yeah. So Tesla... I, I learned a lot by owning Tesla, man. But uh, we are challenging the conventional wisdom. The uh, Every time I see Asian baby guy, I keep thinking Asian baby girl. That's funny. You definitely don't want to be confused on that. Um, he, he might go through a name change operation. <laughs> <laughs> no, so... Uh, this is this is interesting. I, I learn a lot from this uh, from this. Uh, you guys have any question for for some of these guys? If don't know, let me just monopolize on all that. Uh, I I literally did not know that. Uh, it, it's just crazy how I open yeah. this. Yes, Asian baby. If you even if you drip shares, you're still gonna be taxed. Yeah. Yeah. So the question. Oh yeah, that I learned. So once once you receive the dividend. The U.S. government, uh, well, I don't want to say all government, but the U.S. government will tax that dividend. No, but here's a question which you allude to earlier today during our clinics uh, training. I did, I did not know about this tax thing, which is, and and you asked me about it. I said, I said I understood it, but I haven't done any research on it. I just know the difference between the two. Uh, there's one. You, uh, they're taxing you based on. Okay, you know what? Let me let me just stop talking. I don't know what the two, the tax rule is then, because I, I just confused myself. What what's the difference? Between, what what? Let's just use Tesla as an example. What what is the tax Tesla's tax? What what is what is the? Uh, it taxes ordinary income, just like what you get from work. So um, if I make fifty thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. I. And and now, now one year later, let's say one year later, I made twenty eight thousand. This is included to my fifty thousand, so now I'm making seventy eight thousand dollar. Yep. Oh, that's not bad. Well, Why is um, it be because qualified dividends get taxed at a lower bracket. Yeah, fifteen percent instead of thirty. Okay, yeah. so. Okay, what's what, what what what's how why Tesla is not a qualified dividend? Because they get their money from option trading. Option trading is always unless you're doing future stuff or SPX, it's always ordinary income. Option trading is always ordinary income unless you're holding the contract for a whole year. Oh. So in order to get qualified dividends, it has to be a qualified company reporting qualified dividends, which we're not getting any dividends from Tesla. Is Coca-Cola right? we don't own any Coca Cola stock. considered qualified? Yes. Okay, I'm just trying to respect though. All right, so a stock can be qualified, but not option. So most yeah, ETF are not qualified then. No, no, no. SCHD is a qualified. Okay. So it just depends on what is in there and then if there's if there's if the etf holds certain things that are qualified and not qualified it will distribute you based on the percentage of what's qualified and what's not qualified okay so if well, it's every, not qualified how so i make fifty thousand dollars a year and let's say that i have only all shd and i have twenty eight thousand dollar dividend shd so how did it tax is, is it to conclude concluded to fifty eight thousand i mean twenty fifty thousand a year plus twenty eight thousand or or they take the twenty thousand minus minus fifteen percent and that's that's the rate. Yes, the fifteen percent because SCHD will be qualified dividend. So it will be that money will be taxed at fifteen. Oh, is it is there amount under fifteen? Like like you have to reach a million dollar in order to trigger like most tax that have a certain threshold? Mm -hmm. Like you have to have uh, ordinary, ordinary, ordinary side dividend stays qualified. Dividends are always qualified. Oh, okay. Qualified um, mean you're qualified for the rate of 15%. Yes. 
So that company will already declare it. Um, I'm going to run down a couple of these questions. So FW, you asked a really good question here. Uh, we should wait to buy Tesla after the dividend is paid. It will be much cheaper. Um, so here's this one for you. Let's say Tesla is at 14 and after the ex-dividend, it dropped to 13 and a week later it's at 14. If I had it from the whole time, I would have gotten the dividend, it dropped and now it's back up to 14. So you see what I'm saying? So getting getting the dividend is is always good because if the stock recovers back to 14 after it dropped to 13, even though you bought it at 13, you'll be up a dollar, I'll be up a dollar, but I already got the dividend from the last one. Hey, Kenny. Yes. Got sir. a question for you. Yeah. That same thought that FW had about buying X dividend date. If you buy at X dividend and you buy it at 13, your yield on cost will always be better than if you bought it at 14. If you're not dripping it, yes. Your yield yeah. on cost will, but remember you missed that one dividend, so you'll never get that yeah. dividend back. No, no, no. So it's just that you missed that one dividend. Yeah. But when it comes to a certain point, it's like you're splitting hairs, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. if, if it's that close, I just take my dividend. And if I believe in the stock, then it should go back up because that's my belief. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not worried about yeah. Yeah, exactly. getting in cheaper or any of the sort because that's my belief in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I have a question. This is from Saber. Saber, you, you in Discord. Why don't you just ask us in Discord? Uh, I'm trying to go through see some of these questions please put the question to the expert yeah but just ask us <laughs> okay he want me to read it i guess I, yep. are you are you worried about your english I, I i wouldn't worry about it but let me read saber question uh unless saber's not able to talk okay so his question is a crane share question this is clip clip dividend paid from the return of capital as per this so any impact for future dividends? Tessie, uh, return again. Oh, keep going. My bad. Keep going. Tessie, take the dividends from the earning, not the principal. Clip Make dividend paid point. from the return of the capital. So yes. I think I think the way he wants to know the question is, cap uh, clip because they own KWeb, they actually have a cover call. They they're covered. They're using KWeb to do cover call. They actually own the asset. Like Tesla does not own Tesla. Make sense? So the question yeah. he wants to know, does that affect the dip future dividends? Does, does that cause the erosion? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, I'm going to come out and say like Clip, Clip is a lot more riskier for, ero for nav erosion because instead of them paying a lower dividend, they choose to give you back some of your money and pay a higher dividend. And the stock drops, right? Because remember, the stock dropping, the stock drops whatever you pay out to somebody. So because they want to keep their high dividend, they rather give you return of capital. Yes, and one pound, Brian, you're correct. Return of capital is not tax, tax, but your cost basis goes down. So when it's time to sell, that's when you're going to get taxed. Say, but do you understand that? Uh, so. Uh, well, first of all, let me check Discord. Is he in Discord? Or he yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I'm here. Sorry, I, I was just outside. Uh, I just came from my prayer, so I just silently uh, looking. Sorry, listening your conversation. Yeah, were you in the bathroom too, like Kenny? No, 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 no. I'm not in the bathroom. No, no, I never dress like that. But I, if I'm in the online means, I'm sitting in front of my computer. Okay, okay. You you didn't get the joke, but that's okay. <laughs> so <laughs> did, did did we answer your question? So because yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I got the question, but you know, from the Ethan channel, I learned from this uh, very deep knowledge from TN Bob. He's a user. He asked the question. I research more about that. Uh, and then looks like a SPY also similar uh, thing. They will return the dividend from the principal. So only clip, right? But TS, like, which we are, we, are, we are master in the, we are, we are doing the more in investment. TS, TSLY, that is a Tesla based uh, ETF only. Uh, give the it never give the take from the principal it will directly from the profit whatever they do a synthetic call they'll return that money 
but a clip they are getting from the principal yes. that's what i just were worried it may be in future gener- future on we might have issues if you invest in clip just for a question yes um so that's the that's the thing with clip right um is they sell it at the money call so your your chance of getting upside is is no good and they're trying to maintain the high dividend so they're returning the capital to you so oh, okay. it, it is it is a lot more risky than tesla in my eyes yeah for example uh that uh, tn boy that he, he also explained in the chat with the uh, ethan Ch- channel for example uh, clip start paying like a 10 cent uh, like if you say 50 percent for two three months you start paying like 10 cent or five cent and he said it's a red flag uh, that time we safely we can uh, sell the clips stocks and then come back to different stocks which pay you better that's what he mentioned in the the chart J- just sharing the what uh, we discussed with uh, the tn boy i discussed with the tn boy in the chat room okay i did not understand your last uh okay for example what what uh, the tn boy he mentioned that uh, for who's, example who's tn boy uh, TN Boy is a username. TN oh. Bob. TN Bob. He's a user. Oh, the... TN Bob. Oh, TN Bob yeah. is here. Yeah, yeah. TN Bob. Yep. He 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 hang out on our Discord. He's part of the community. Oh, okay, sure. So what he mentioned that. Uh, um, um, so for example, uh, these funds will continue to pay decent uh, dividends until you start to notice that the income funds are significantly less than the dividends paid. At that point, it is start to look like a bonus scheme. Yeah, yes, you're correct. So, what, um, like, if you own Clip, right? Um, I don't have that much money in Clip right now, but let's say Clip makes ten million a month in order to pay their 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 eighty cent uh, dividend, right? So, if next month they only make six million and they're trying to pay ten million. That means they're doing return of capital and the fund is not making enough money. So when they return capital, that means they have less capital to use because they gave money back. That means they're going to make less money the month after that again. So that's where you have to keep an eye on the investment to see exactly what's going on in the fund so you can understand. So that's how nav erosions happen is they're paying out money that they don't have. So you just have to watch to see what they're doing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you answer the question. Thank you camera. I appreciate your help. Yeah, yeah, no Thank problem. You, yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, as it, long as we answer your question. It's good planning, yeah. It's yeah. good. Yeah, I wanted to buy clip but uh, I did some research. I found I can I can be wait uh, I can wait and watch the clip before I uh, buy it. But I'm comfortable with the Tesla. TSLY looks good. I can go with the TSLY. Yeah, the Confidently. The biggest difference between the two is uh, one own the asset and Yieldmax does not own the asset. Yieldmax does the synthetic call by owning the options. Uh, so that's what they own is the option. But Clip does not, I don't know, I don't know how Clip pay 90 cents. That's just unbelievable. Because they, they spend like at the money call. Yeah. So remember our calls are five or 10% out of the money. Yeah. So a 5% call might go for $200 while a hat the money call goes for um $1000. Oh, that's that's where they get the money from is Yes. It's more money. But there's more money but the stock doesn't they don't they don't see none of the rally. Yeah. They don't see the stock going up at all. Yeah, but but they own Kweb. Kweb doesn't really rally. It's the Kweb is like Disney. They're like they just like slowly decline. Just lower. don't for Disney, man. Why, <laughs> why are you trying to poke me now, dude? Just don't talk about Disney. I'll, I'll show you I'm, what KWEP look like. KWEP is like this. I I'm mute look- myself. He's talking about Disney. I'm mute myself. I'm mad. <laughs> oh, uh, this is K. Uh, this is KWEP. It's just, it's pretty much, it's a slow, but it, it has it has its peak and valley, but it's essentially a it's a slow decline this whole year it dropped from 35 to 27 just think about that perspective it's just slowly going this way but it has a lot of peak and valley and uh interesting though interesting interesting uh dynamic between the two how come you how come you don't own clip uh kenny just curious
I, I, I have 100 shares. Um, I'm just not going to put any more money in there because I have nothing exposing me to China and I don't want to buy Alibaba or, you know yeah, what I mean? So yeah. I, I, I'll just put 100 shares in it and I will let it I'll let it sit there and see what happens. But I'm I'm not reinvesting the dividends. I'm just taking the the money and putting it elsewhere. OK, so here's a question from Tripster. This is Tripster. The question is, should I take some money from Tesla tomorrow and put it into Tesla and get some profit from the stock going up tomorrow and then put it back into Tesla? That's not even a, that's not even a logical. I think I think I think Tripster, I think you're trolling us. It's not even logical. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not even. You, a, you, you do what you want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I try to tell I, you how to trade your account. You do yeah, what you want to do. Yeah, it's your money, man. Do whatever you want to do. I don't know. I don't know why you even ask the question. First of all, when when if you sell Tesla at any time now, you're gonna sell at a loss. When did you buy Tesla? At thirteen dollar, which happened only like a week ago. So I don't know when you bought it, but but if you sell Tesla right now, it's a loss. It's I'm pretty I'm pretty confident it will be a loss. So you already lost that way, and then Tesla is only like fourteen dollar, and Tesla and Tesla is like two hundred thirty something dollars. I don't know how do you, what it's like. <laughs> yeah so um <laughs> fw yeah that that's the whole thing right when when you write at the money calls you literally risk yourself for nav erosion yeah. right because there's no way to to get to for the stock to recover after the x dividend there's no way for the stock to recover and if the stock drops this month and it doesn't recover you're forced all right this this will explain it real easy so i was in the qild trap until I sold that shit when I woke up out of the matrix, right? So this is it. We're going to use $10 for a stock. QILD is at $10, right? So we wrote the at the money $10 call expiring October 1st. And we got $100, right? The Elon Musk died and every stock fell. So now we're down to $9, right? So the end of the month the the nasdaq fell everything fell because elon died and we're down to nine dollars right yep remember your, your your prospectus says you have to write at the money call so you can't write a ten dollar call or eleven dollar call you have to write a nine dollar call so how do you get that dollar back how, how, how does your fund go up because remember the dollar you got from the first call you gave it to your shareholders right so the stock fell to nine you write another call for a dollar you give that dollar to the shareholders how does the stock go up you see what i'm saying the stock is not gonna have no chance to go up so the only way your stock rises is if new people come so this is why this is the trap part right so you trap some new people to come in to buy the stock from nine to ten and then you write a ten dollar call because you want enough people to come in to get the stock up so if enough people is not coming in, that stock is never going to come up because every month you're putting a cap on it. Ah, somebody says, never say Elon die. <laughs> Cut his mic, guys. That's funny. Um, But that is why I went away from QILD was because at the money covered calls, it's, it's tough to get out of it without new people coming into the fund yeah. when it drops. Well, QILD is still, it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good uh, dividends no, it, for seventeen dollars. It, it gives you the dividends, yes, but you don't. I, I was in it at twenty three, bro, and it fell to fifteen. Like I, I know pain. Um, but that's the that's the whole thing with nav erosion is when somebody's writing an at the money cover call, you have to look to see how they're gonna play themselves out of it. While with Yilmax they they write calls five ten percent out so even if the stock drops mm -hmm. we can recover because they're always writing out of the money Q -Y -L -D. this is qyld so yep. for 17 dollar i mean it's 11 percent dividends paying 17 so the problem is that that nav erosion you're talking about and it's also dividend yep. erosion so their dividends at one point was paying very well you know, in a high, t in a high twenty, low twenty, yep. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it's just slowly dropping, and you can see the dividend growth is like negative number now. And um, this is a, 
this is a byproduct of what he's talking about. I mean, that that's a major concern. Now, is there a way to recover it, or they? Well, the only way they can you change need, it, they have to change their practice, or their. That's, that's their, one, or they get new people to come in. So let's say your fund is valued one billion dollars. Well, well, if you get another billion dollar, dollar, if you get another billion dollar come in the fund, yeah, the price is gonna go up, right? Because you're you have more assets now. So the price is going to go up, but anytime the market starts dipping, you're going to fall back into the same trap again. Yeah. One thing, one thing I learned from Jay's interview that if you want to change, if the fund manager want to change the strategy like QILD to a, not, not a cover call on the money, but off the money by five to 15%, they have to resubmit the entire plan back to SEC. To get it approved. To get approved. They can't just change it. So they're, they're stuck with this until until SEC prove their strategy. Uh, th so that's pretty interesting fact that I, I did not know that Jay said that. Like they asked a question if if, if Tesla or Yield Max going to do something. He said, yeah, they can do whatever, but they have to submit it for approval to just to make and minor we, change. And we all will see that paperwork when they submit it. So yeah. they're not going to slide it on the door and get away. We're going to see that. Yeah. That 10K and all that stuff coming on them trying to change it. Uh, let me see these questions. Yeah, if you have any questions, you, you can come on Discord and just ask us. and uh, Or you can just ask in chat. Discord is much easier because it's voice and it's much easier to explain something in, over voice or to get the question out of you. Uh, but here's the chat and you just jump right in and <laughs> uh. so trips the I answer his question I said it's your money good luck and he said laugh out loud thanks all right but that's that's a silly question to even ask uh one cape should I say I should sell my QILD and get Apple that's up to you brother if you want to get out of QILD I, I ditched that thing from like a year and a half ago. I'm QILD free. It's a good time to sell QILD though, if you're gonna sell it because right now, I don't know when you bought it, but right now it's, uh, you look at it, it's on a, it's high point right now. Um, it's it's about 50% on, on its uh, 52 weeks high. So 52 weeks high is $18. We're, we're essentially only, you know, a, you know, less than a dollar from its 52 weeks. It's on the high side instead of on the low side, so it's a good time to sell. But it, you know, that it's, buying and selling, that's your, that's your, you know, your recommendation. I bought into it, so just, just give you perspective. I own, I own uh, QYLD. I bought one share. Why? Because I like the dividends on it, and I'm not. I'm, I don't think I need to own more. Remember, I remember for my PowerPoint slide from the beginning, I need to grow my first week. My first week I have Bitto, and I need, I need so I need to grow my first week. So I need to grow with Bitto, QYLD, uh, XYLD, and then maybe potentially Chuppy. All those guys all paid the first week. SVOL paid the last day, but that's very similar to Clip. Uh, uh, so, so this way I can get that money. So the result, I just need, I just need those four or five funds to pay me one thousand dollar, and then I'm good. Whatever, how many share that need? Maybe 200 share, maybe 300 share, or maybe 400 share. But whatever the number of share it is for me to get a thousand dollar, then I'm good. That's the reason why I own it. Uh, all right. Where is my portfolio? Owner. I'll, I'll show you exactly what I own, how many share I own here. Let me click a second. Charles Watt. QYLD. I'm, I'm scrolling through here. Yep, I own QYLD or YLD. These two I own. I don't know how many. I forgot how many I own, but I own these two. QYLD or YLD. It's mainly to, to get that payments on the first week. Remember, my, I, sp I, I, I spread load my uh, my uh, risk mitigation, not through risk, but through payments, all right? So different different way of doing things. 
Any any other questions? Uh, um. So I have a uh, who's name? Uh, Philip Latanya asked how SPYI works. So SPYI they basically buy S and P so stocks. Yeah. And they sell twelve fifty six contracts on on the SPX. Uh, and they also will buy call options if the market is bullish. So that's how that stock is able to gain so much money this year is because they actually if they think the market is bullish, they will buy contracts. So that's what makes them different in the sense of and they can grow their portfolio because they're they have a way of gaining money by buying options too. Yeah, so the key word here in in uh in the uh, uh description now this oh my head is in the way. Let me just see I can move it so you can see it. So Neil um the fund aim for tax e efficient high monthly income by actively investing in stock and options. Option is what what the yield max guy is doing in the SP 500 index. So the fund employ a call spread approach that use SPX index. Now uh, SPX have their own index, which is a S and P 500, but it's an index that measure that future contracts. Uh, yeah. So that's how exactly what he's talking about. So essentially they do that to make, to generate more income. Um, it's a pretty, Spy is pretty good, man. The only thing I don't like about them is just they're forty-eight dollars. But other than that, man, I I don't mind owning them at all. Um, one thing I like about them is their pay, which is in the fourth week, and that's why I probably end up owning them. Does they fall in the clip category for me? Yeah. So Spy, I like I like them. I like them. I just don't like the price. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I want to put a thousand shares, I gotta put a fifty k. Uh, I love yeah. Elon more. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love Elon more. Yeah. Um, so here's a question I, I, uh, from, this is from Discord. Are there any ETF before yield max that have done this synthetic option strategy? As someone who doesn't do option and who has just come across Tesla a week ago, it's almost like yield max has potentially found a golden formula. Um. I, not that I know of, um, like. Now somebody did wrote a book on it, so that means somebody did it. Yeah, no, no, hedge funds do stuff like this. Yeah. But like, not like an ETF. So like hedge funds, you know, once they get the money, they can do whatever they want to do, right? Yeah. Um, so like hedge funds will do things like this, but like having an ETF with one stock creating a synthetic position, no, because the ETF requires you to have the max twenty five percent of your money in one position. Yeah. Pulled up if you pull up yield max again yep. um on the holdings and we can see how much money there you we can see what percentage of the money is being used if you go on the page and look at the percentages down by the holding and you can see they're not even using 25 percent of the money um and they're making right they're here. making the money um if you go on the what we call it yield max website so that's the the part there that makes it different with them is they're doing something that nobody else out here is doing you mean the top 10 right. holding right here? Nope. At the bottom. All the way at the bottom. All the way at the bottom. Uh, you're lagging behind because I'm not, uh, you're not streaming in Discord, so I can't keep oh, up. Oh, shoot. Yeah, let me, let me do that. I'm sorry. Can you see? Uh, one second. So now I can talk. Yeah, so if we look and we see how much money they're using, right? So they're using, t we're going from the bottom. So yeah. if you go to yep come back to the left one no no all the yep 10 percent. see they're right there 10. Yeah. 8, 4. so that's 10.8 percent of the money so plus 4.59 we're gonna say that's 16.5 yeah. point, point right so when you go up if you look at it they're not even using 20 percent of the money yeah because so 90 percent of the money, of the is, money sitting, is sitting in it's, it's sitting in in there you see what i'm saying so they're able to create because options give you leverage right that's the yeah. main thing option gives you is leverage so they can create this without even using 90 percent of the money you know what i mean like they're, they're using 16 16 percent of the money right here and if you think about it we're down 
on the bottom one, right? We're down 10% on the bottom one yep. down here. So technically they're only using 10%, 10% of the money. You, you see how, you see how crazy this is? Like they're only using 10%. So that's why people are saying like you have 10% of money to risk, but if you're an option trader, you know, you, you lose time or money and he just rolls. If he has a problem, he, yeah. he rather lose time than lose our money. Yeah. So he rather give us a small dividend than to give us a large dividend by giving us more, giving us return of capital. Yeah, this this is a very professional, way, very well run uh, group. Now time will tell I, if a year from now and we still manage to maintain uh, a very efficient, a very efficient. I, I can say yield max is going to get very popular pretty quickly here. They're probably what's yield max? What's yield max uh, asset right now? Uh, Four hundred million. What Tesla? Yeah, what's Tesla? Oh, you just had it. Just had it on the page. Go back to the page. You were just on the page. Right oh, there. Five, the, yeah, five hundred sixteen. Yeah, five sixteen. Oh my God, it jumped. Remember, we were looking at this. We were looking at four hundred. But the before. stock. But remember, the stock went up. I remember, we're down almost a hundred million on those that you have at the bottom and now we're down 55 yeah so all that money that we made back is just by the stock going up yeah we're making back our money off those puts that's crazy man this thing gonna be a billion dollar by the end of the year it's gonna be that would be the, and a billion sure. dollars with the same amount of people in there so it's just us and the fund jumped up to a billion because we kept reinvesting our dividends back. Yeah, in it's it. just it's just a retail. This is all retail investor. There's not a lot of institution investor. Like I don't know any institution bought Tesla yet. They all like that's one of the reasons why Jay is going around doing these YouTube videos and going on. Put it put it this way, M MSNBC don't even interview him. The only nope. people interview him are <laughs> are the YouTuber. Because he knows that's why his money is coming from us. Yeah. A majority of come from Sam. Where's Sam? <laughs> Sam and Matt. Matt, Matt, he, he, he's, he's talking about you, man, your money. <laughs> All right, let me look on YouTube. Um, I got like five more minutes and then I got to. Um, Can you open up my money all I want? <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, what happened when it get too big? That's did anybody ask uh, Jay that question? So the, the the yield, it's not that the yield will be lower. It's just he's gonna have to start working with other market makers, right? So the more money he gets, it means because if you have five hundred million, right, and he's using ten percent of that, yeah. When he, you know, what I mean, he can only put on twenty thousand contracts, yeah, right. But when he has a hundred million. He can put on forty thousand contracts. So yeah. he's, he, you know, and as he says, he talks to multiple market makers. So he, they'll just have to go out and talk to more market makers. If it gets too big, they'll just link up with BlackRock or yeah, yeah some big or one of them. Yeah, they just need another market maker to get in there to take the trade. But there's always somebody there waiting to take the trade. It's just they want how they, they do it. what they do. Um, the amount of money makes no difference. They just put it through other market makers. That's why it's really scalable. Interesting. Yeah, it, this is a very interesting. Uh, no, this is a good time right now. Uh, you, you guys, you we we all come at the right time. Um, and I think so. Yeah, we're coming at the right time. We're buying this. Those who bought at thirteen dollar, congratulations, you made it. My gut feeling is that we may have a chance to get thirteen dollar again. So, uh, you know, back in January or February, if this cone, <laughs> if this, my theory is right, and uh, I hate this view. I hate this. Uh, so there's a dip. There's a dip here. So at the at the beginning, twenty twenty three. Um, there's a huge dip here, and then there's a dip here. This is when the uh, the the bank failure, and now we got a dip here. 
So we're going to create a cone. The next time they're going to come back on the other side of the cone is like January and February. So, or, or some, something happened to Tesla or, you know, Tesla News. Uh, but this, I think I'm going to get smarter. So next time what happened is if I get a big chunk of money, I'm just going to hold that money. Put, I'm going to put it in the U.S. Treasury just to hold it. And then when, when, there's a, when the price drop uh, to $13 or something like that, not just, not just Tesla, but whatever's, whatever the yield max family it is drop at its lowest point, it, it's 52 weeks low, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw that money into it in that time. That, that's that's going to be my new strategy now. Since there's so many more funds, before it was only just the end of the day, yeah? so long as you're buying when you want to buy, that's all that matters. Um, the price will be the price, but if it, here I go, oh, that's I don't true. buy it at all-time all highs. Yeah, I buy, start buying when it's down about ten percent from where it was. Yeah, I'm not buying at the peak, and I'm bringing my average cost down. So Gerald, um, Gerald had a question. Yeah, the two-part question. Yep. Um, there's not unlimited market maker, but there will be somebody who's willing to take your trade. So let's say um, Goldman Sachs doesn't want to take the trade. He'll go to Morgan Stanley. You see what I'm saying? Or there's a hedge fund that wants to take the trade. Yeah, hey, old Black Rock take the trade. God, and yeah, anybody, somebody who's step in and take the trade unlimited. because it's your bet versus them, right? Um, the next part of his question is, um, if it gets to Jeppy level, um, how does it fill that many contracts a month? I'll just explain it to you that you know, Jay is going to say, I got 40,000 contracts now because my fund is doubled. So let's say they have like a Discord chat. I'm not saying they do, but they'll put it there and BlackRock will lift their hand up and say, hey, take the 40,000 contracts right now for 550. And Morgan Stanley will say, oh, we'll give you 570 right now. And Jay just clicks the button and sell it to Morgan Stanley. That's basically how I foresee it going. That's what happens in a nutshell. Just farm it out. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I don't, I don't know how it works, man. We, by that time, you're talking about institution are buying these things. Well, it already is. Yeah. What is um. No, somebody posted earlier, I just saw that Elon bought a whole bunch of Tesla stocks. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I get notification as soon as the forms are, are registered with the SEC saying that he's bought or sold, and I haven't seen anything come through today yet. I believe it was from the 24th, but yeah. I haven't received notification. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, so uh, let's talk about next week. I thought I thought Lauren's going to come join us, uh, but it's nine fourteen right now, and she has not joined us. And so uh, we'll keep we'll keep cheering for her when she show up. We show uh, we'll we'll talk to her. But uh, anybody have any last question here before we gonna uh, any, any get questions? rid of Kenny? Uh. Those that are in clip, use your dividend wisely because it'll um, pay this week. Yeah, so even though clip is at 27, 29 billion, remember again that if we're at 29 billion, we're only using 10% of that on contracts, yeah. 2.9 billion. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. the majority of that money is going to be invested in treasuries making us money. So what I want to see at the end of the year is that treasury money coming to us and see how much money we make out of that. Um, right, you can see his clips holding. They just went out and bought a lot. I mean, they they, they bought a lot of. Uh, they do a lot of calls, pretty much every single price point. <laughs> um, so Saber asked a question: If Tesla split, does it impact Tesla to split? Right. Also, no. So, um, well. The only way it would happen is in solo. Let me just make it easy. So if Tesla splits, uh, do a do a forward split, meaning when a company wants to split their stock into more shares, it means they have new investors they foresee coming to buy the stock, right? So that's what Elon is saying. Hey, 
people don't want to buy a Tesla at 300, they want to buy it at 30. So for every every um every uh share you have, we're going to give you 10 more shares, right? He's going to drop the stock to 30 because he feels more people's coming to buy it. So because he has that speculation outlook, people are like maybe he's going to you know announce that Tesla is going to make an airplane on battery or some shit, right? So people are going to start buying up the stock which is going to cause Tesla to rise right and it, let's say Tesla is at a hundred dollars we're probably going to be making like an eight dollar dividend and the guys might be like hey we don't want the stock this high because it, it this you know people don't want to, I don't want to buy SPYI because it's forty nine dollars right I don't want to put that much into a stock so they might they might split two to make it smaller but it, when a stock splits on the dividend side your dividend should be the same meaning percentage wise of money you get okay like if a split happens while um yield max have an option out on tesla whatever the the stock split is so if it's 10 to 1 say so they end up with nine others the same that automatically happens in the background they don't need to do anything for that when they yeah. do when, when when they buy a contract after split happens that one contract is 10 percent of, of of what it was the month before so they buy 10 times as much the same amount of money uh the minus side minus sign beside contracts mean they sold negative oh. right so that means you don't own it um that was a question from uh john he was asking what does the minus sign mean yep. it means that you are negative that contract that means you sold it um, looking at this last question from uh i think that's about it all right thanks for having me guys um i got school in the morning and you, you already know military is brutal so i gotta be there <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna go try and get some uh, resty rest. Yeah, no, uh, good job. Kenny. I'm still gonna be, I'm still gonna be on my phone though, so I might type, but I'm gonna go get some resty rest. <laughs> All right, you get nice addicted talking to this guys. Night, man. Yeah, I ain't doing nothing, man. Like I'm away from my family and I'm living in the barracks, bro. Like yeah. I'm not doing a damn thing, dude. <laughs> and I'm stuck here on this base in Virginia. Like, yeah, I'm not doing nothing. All right, brother, peace. Yeah, take care, man. So okay. for those who don't know this, uh, Kenny Kenny's in the Navy, and uh, I'm in the Marine, so we make fun of each other all the time, and uh, so we, we like to tease each other. Kenny is very well informed. Just think about it. everything everything that you guys talk about. At one point, he was in your shoe. He was in my shoe, you know, a few years ago. So it's not like he was. It's not like he went to school for this stuff. It's not like you know, this this stuff is not taught in the military. You you have to learn it on your own, and. Um, and he just did trading and he just got really good at it, you know. Um, and so he understood he understood the mechanic of that stuff uh, really well. And uh, yeah, so anybody can get to any anybody can get to that level of uh, expertise. And you don't have to be an expert. Like, dude, I, I don't know anything. I don't even know how to read the chart. Just think about that. If you saw me 20 minutes ago, I don't even know how to read the chart. So and I. Uh, and I don't even know how to read the financial statement. I, I, I'm thinking about taking class at a community college so I can learn how to read the financial data sheet. Uh, so when you look at CLIP, like for example, and they, they show uh, the, uh, that's probably a bad example. Let's go look at like Coca-Cola. Uh, let's, yeah, that, a PW, just because I already typed. When you look at the financial statement, I don't know how to, I don't know how this read. I just know that this number, 2014, this number is greater, so it's going up. So that's good. I mean, it's just common sense. I, I don't need to know, what, but I understand revenue is total income that they receive or whatever, you know. But then once you get to, like, like what what's the difference between revenue and then you know, kind of gross profit? It's kind of easy. But I don't know what a YOY is. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what cost of revenue is. I uh, I'm assuming. I don't know what the mean different between these expense here and operating income. What is that? That's weird. You know, so pre-taxes, 
And then when you get to the, when you get to all this stuff here, I was, I'm really, really confused. And then, and then E B I D T, and then they talk about cash flow and all stuff. Uh, I, I, yeah. After anything from down here, I pretty much, pretty much, I have no idea, no idea. It's foreign to me. It's like it's like looking at Greek. So, but however, the reason I tell you that it doesn't not don't don't let that scare you. Don't don't allow these kind of little things scare you, because all 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 the stock market care about is that you open a brokerage account. Charles Schwab, Robin Hood, E-Trade, whatever it is, and you put money in there, $100, and you buy whatever you buy. You don't have to buy Tesla, you can buy, go buy your favorite, you know. Uh, I would start cheap. If you buy something expensive, it's just kind of like, it, it's just gonna demoralize you, and then and then you're gonna end up quitting and not doing it. There's more, there's, there's a lot of people dap into, um, into uh, financial investment, and then they always end up quitting. Matter of fact, you just look at some of the YouTube videos. Some of these YouTube video, they haven't made video in a while. I search a lot of video, and you see a lot of YouTube. At one point, they gave out great advices, do all kind of amazing things. What happened? Why do they stop making? How do you stop? Investment is investment. Why would you stop? I don't understand it. Uh, could be could be a number of reasons. It could have been personal. It could have been uh, financial. It could have been whatever. But a lot of time is uh, a lot of time is that people tend to do things that are more complicated and they end up losing money. And uh, and and when they lose money, they, they tend to just quit. And so you gotta be a little safe on that. I have no plan of losing money. So when I, even though I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty extreme in terms of what I do, I would just, I would liquidate my entire assets and then rebuy something just to experiment yeah, but I'm not gonna liquidate something that's a losing money. Like, I'm not gonna sell this. Like, for example, one of the questions was, I'm gonna sell Tesla to buy Tesla. Why would I sell Tesla right now? Why would anybody sell Tesla right now? I'm negative $5,000 in the hole. If you're gonna sell it, wait until it becomes, wait, wait until you get your money back, $16, and then sell it. But why would you sell at a loss? So. Um, and then they start buying stuff that they don't know about. You know, they just start investing, putting a lot of money uh, and time and energy on things that doesn't really generate. Uh, you know, buying just buying random stuff that you don't know about, then you, you, have, you probably end up you end up losing. You're gonna end up losing money. But that's why I go with dividend. Dividend income is to me is a lot easier and a lot safer. Uh, just from my perspective, I I, I could be wrong. And uh, th that's the reason why I do it that way. I just, as long as the company pay me income, uh, dividends, I'm happy, man, I'm happy. And I, sp I like ETF more than company, single stock. Single stock, there's a low, whole litany of things that may potentially, you know, bring the stock value down, bring the dividend down. Think of MPW, for example. There's a lot of decision. But ETF is not like that. ETF is a collection of stocks or collection of things that that their sole purpose is to generate dividends. So, uh, so that's one of the reasons why I like dividends so much. You know, think about like if you don't know what to buy, if you're brand new to this thing, you just watch my YouTube channel. You're like, okay, I don't know about it. Let's just, I don't have any problem you buying SCHD. We always like to tease it all, but it's just expensive, seventy-three dollar, and you're gonna get some yield. You get sixty-six dollar, and you get you know three point five. It's gonna take you a while. It's not like TSLY. It's gonna take you a long time to get money. But it's safe. It's pretty safe. It, this is a safe holding. It's just gonna buy. It just, just go left and right. And maybe go up. It's gonna grow, um, and so it's fine. But then you just do research. Just do research and say, okay, what about Chuppy? Why don't you just buy Chuppy? Chuppy is cheaper, fifty-four dollar, and then you get more dividends. You get twenty-nine cents more. It's ten percent, uh, and if you hold a year, you get five dollars. You know, if you bought one, you get five dollar at the end. Yeah, so it's a, uh, it's just different, you know, just different way of uh, of looking at these things. That's it. I want to share. I, I want to share with you with all that. Um, yeah, I I really enjoy this. This has been a, a blast. Hey guys, I've been doing this YouTube now for about essentially a month. Uh, not even, you know, I started. I started back what in August, August something. I you know, and uh, and I I just been a blast. I learned more. Uh, I learned more about investment 
now than I ever did before, and it's, it helped me a lot. Um, and so, did my investment philosophy change a little bit? Yeah, it changed. It changed a lot. It it it. Um, I still, but the core of it is still there. I'm going after high yield dividend income. Uh, why do I do that? Because mainly, I don't want to work anymore. All right. There's nothing out there right now in the investment world that can give you high passive income that that essentially replace my job, replace my job. And that's, I got about three, four years before I retired, before I punch out and take off my uniform. And so, so I, I, I'm doing everything I can right now to get that passive income while I still have good salary, good everything. And then when I go to dividend income only, uh, you know, uh, but at least I don't have to work. I don't have to work. I just collect my, you know, my my VA benefits, my pension, and all that stuff, and I just enjoy life. That's the goal. That's the goal that you want to do. Uh, you know, I don't know what all your job is. Everybody have different job in different uh, places. Um, but why do you want to work? Continue on working. You know? uh, no, don't go. Exit music. Yes. Turn the music off, you can't leave us. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, I learned a lot. So, the best way to do this, just come hang out with our Discord. You have our Discord, get into Discord, because there's guy talking all the time. Uh, like Kenny, he's talking all the time. There's, there's uh, TN Bob, he's in there, he hang out. Pretty much everybody who who's here, they hang out in our Discord. They post their portfolio, they post their pictures, uh, they post, they talk about, they, if you want to know about a particular stock and you have questions, now granted we're not expert, there's not a single person in this channel uh, would classify as expert or financial expert, I don't think any of us have license. Uh, but however, we've just been doing it for a while and we can help each other and this is a great community to do that. Or the other way to do is join, join, you know, go to a library and join an investment club, and then you know that will help out. I've never been in an investment club, but I think this is this is a much better investment club because you have a community that 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 help each other. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. So it's uh, uh it's it's 9:28, and uh, we waited for Lauren to come on, but she did not come on. So at this point, I'm gonna tap out here. Uh, unless you have any question, any recommendations, uh, any new any new people here, you created one, man. Uh, yeah, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, this this is a this is a very good community so far. I went, I went to somebody else's Discord, I still have it, and I don't think he used Discord. Uh, and so, Ethan has his own Discord now, by, by the way, if you want to check it out. I, I recommend just join all these investments, uh, you know, just go. Ethan, are you there by any chance? I'm here, Kamara, nice show, good job. Oh man, do you want to plug in your Discord a little bit, or you want to talk about what's uh, are you planning to change your format? First of all, I love your Jeep and oh no, you're not in a Jeep. You're in something. No, I'm in a I'm in a Jeep. Yeah, that's where I that's where I shoot most of all my videos. Um, yeah, that's somebody asked me today. They're like, "Why are you always shooting your Jeep?" I'm like, "I'm a Jeep guy." Uh, yeah, I won't. Um, I'll probably keep the format kind of the same for, for that kind of stuff. If people want to join my Discord, it's right on my channel. I was I give a, a a link to Discord if they want to get there. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and post a link. I, I'm all about sharing idea. Uh, this is how I knew. This is how I knew that Ethan is another level of professionalism, and this is why he's rich. <laughs> For those of he, he is super rich compared to me. All right. And um, when when we were came up with the idea, we were talking. Ethan is not threatened by by us whatsoever. He's not. He's not. He's trying to help us. He's trying to help us uh, improve. I will show, he improve our investment strategy, he challenged us, he asked us questions, and he gave us some ideas and just to improve because the more 
people improve, uh, the, 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 everybody's okay. successful. It's a win-win. And not only that, he gets to learn from it too. So we spent six hours today analyzing Ethan's uh, investment strategy, uh, a whole bunch of us signing up. But we learned from that. And then he came in to clarify a few things. After we came up with an idea, a solution, we think, and then we present it back to him. And I don't think Ethan, you're not, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not upset by that, are you? Anything like that? Oh no! It's like I, I look at it and I'm like I'm, I'm here to to help people learn. I, my my goal is to teach people because I've benefited. I've gotten to the place where I am in life because I've learned from other people. So it's just my way of giving back. Yeah. And I'm constantly learning. Like there are a ton of things I don't know. I mean, yeah. there are people that know way more about tax laws, about options trading, about a whole bunch of different things. And so I'm here to learn, just like I'm here to teach. You know. Yeah, and you know, so there's another YouTube channel. I don't want to mention his name because I'm talking negative right now at the moment. I post a comments. I just ask him what is the risk, and what, you know, I just ask a few questions as a newbie, and he deleted my message. He didn't want to do anything with me. <laughs> it was like <laughs> he saw my name. I he's like remove him from the from his comments. So he's like I didn't want to, do... and I was like, why is it why? He's a big time YouTuber, and he's talking about people buying share. You're like, hey, come on, over. buy, buy this fund, buy that, click on this, do that. And he does not want to do anything with me. He doesn't want to answer my comments. So, so kind of give you, kind of give you perspective that not not everybody in the community will welcome you know, new people. Uh, but however, but it's it's just show you that that. And just think about all those people in Discord that help each other. These guys are just they just wanna help. And I didn't I don't pay them. I don't know them. I never met I never met Kenny in my life. I have no idea. But he, he called me up one day and I was on the phone with him for three hours and he was trying to explain me he was trying to explain me to to talk about Tesla from a different angle. Because because Tesla the way I was explaining Tesla was essentially it's like a losing battle because uh, it's not as you know when you put but you explain it from the option side then it makes so much sense and and so when he explained me the option side of it then Tesla was it, it was it's such a beautiful baby it became such a beautiful baby um, and um, yeah so he opened the open the aperture for me like I don't know the guy he just came in he just want to hope and, and that's the one thing I love about uh, investment community. And and if you can help people to be successful, and that's what that's what my gift is. I, uh, my YouTube channel have literally been occupied with, <laughs> with nothing but investment. Um, but eventually, that's okay. I'm gonna start traveling again. I'm gonna start exploring. And you're gonna start seeing me showing picture of, you know, me in Cambodia's okay. travelings and, and eating and good, uh, all those things. And uh, it's just it's just a cycle we're in. But uh, with that, I want to say thank you so much, guys, for hanging out and and uh, watching. Uh, please subscribe. Please comments and uh, most important comments. I read. I try to read every one of your comments. Uh, if I miss it, I apologize. But I try to read as much as I can because I learn from it. And a lot of your comments, I would go back and ask people like Matt. Uh, I ask like you know. Uh, Redneck Asian, okay. Austin's, uh, uh, Kenny's, all those people. I don't have an answer, so when I give you, when I give you these one or two line sentence, because I really don't have an answer. So what I do is I, I just ask these guys and, and get some knowledge and learn from it. Yeah. And not with this song. <laughs> What's the frequency, Kenneth? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Oh yeah, oh uh, Ethan, what was the conclusion? Are you gonna are you gonna still do it? Are you gonna sell are you gonna sell <laughs> Tesla to buy? We'll close it with that. Uh, your, your no, uh, yeah, I still I still am. I, I you know, after talking with uh, Kenneth, it's like I, he had some good ideas, but I looked up wash sale rules. Yeah. I, I don't think they'll have a negative impact on me, so I'm going to uh, what I'm gonna do is I've got some money in clip. Yep. I'm gonna collect collect a dividend from Clip, and then I'm gonna sell it and and buy Tesla shares with it, and then collect a Tesla dividend, and then and then basically sell the shares that I bought, 
from selling Tesla, Tesla shares that I bought with my clip shares, sell those and buy back my clip shares. So I'll have to probably take some of the dividends that I get to shore up my purchase to make sure I get all my original shares back. But I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to see see what the numbers turn out to be. That's that's amazing, man. So you gonna you gonna wait? You're not gonna sell your clip until you. So how does it work? You're gonna sell on X date? Or you're gonna sell after the X date? So I'm gonna sell after X date. I'm gonna actually just to be safe. I'm going to probably sell when I, on the payout date. Um, right. I think I can. I think I need to hold it to the record date. But just to be safe, I'll sell it on the payout date. Yeah. Um, and then get in and buy Tesla before the X dividend date for Tesla, so I can capture the Tesla. Uh, dividends and and you're gonna keep track of like an Excel spreadsheet and say this is the amount you start off and then this is this is how much you yep exactly I'm gonna track all of it and when it's all done I'll come out with a video and that, present that'd be the awesome. results I can't wait to say, see that man the, yeah you, you're, you're I don't think <laughs> oh, awesome. sorry okay awesome yeah I don't think it's gonna neg uh, negatively impact you um, the only thing is like if you have a capital gains on it it's only gonna hurt you on the taxes but uh, if you catch it where you always make a profit, you know, if you don't drop down too much and the profits from the dividend overcome the losses on the um, the stock dropping, I think you're going to be up on top every time. Yeah, I, I think it'll work. And that's the thing. Like, I, I don't think I'll be selling. I don't think I'll, I'll have a capital gain um, when I sell because basically I'm selling after the payout date and the shares always drop in price. So all I really have to deal with is, OK, having to take some of the dividends that I received to basically add to my purchase amount to make sure I can buy back the original shares. But I was trying to think like, is there a, a negative tax implication other than than that? And I don't think there is. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just run the numbers. I'm gonna find out. We'll, we'll find out yeah. soon enough here. Cause you'll just write it off as a loss on that trade and that'll come out on your, uh, on your taxes, on your brokerage. So I think you'll be all right, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're all so, cheering for you, I, man. I, I wish I had that I, kind of I money can't. to test that out. Well, it's like I, I you know, I just the the last the last thing here on the uh, the taxes is like, uh, since I'm gonna sell at a loss, um, I can't, and, and then I'm rebuying the original stock back. That's called a wash sale, so I actually can't deduct the loss for my taxes, which I'm okay with that. I'm just looking at total return. And factoring that in, so we'll figure it out. But I'll, I'll let you go. I know uh, Kamara wants to wrap up the show, so yep. uh, so thanks, Kamara. <laughs> okay, so with that, hey, thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you all around. I uh, will upload this, uh, you know, video so you can all see it. All right, I appreciate. It. Take care, everyone.